I'm Kyle McAvoy. I'm running for city council. Uh, I'm very proud to be here in Morgantown and I consider this uh, my home. I've been here for 14 years now and I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I, I, you know, this is a place that I knew as soon as I lived here that this was home and I wasn't going to go anywhere. I'm a proud homeowner and I have a unique perspective of being someone who was a student here at one time and then a young professional and now in my early 30s as a homeowner and, and have seen both sides of that spectrum and I, I think that that's a good perspective to have because you have all sorts of people here in Morgantown. You do have students but you also have young families. You also have uh, people who are professionals and you have everything in between. So it's a good idea to have somebody uh, in the city council who has that wide perspective. Um, I also think that it's important that we have somebody who it's in no way against WV, but is not necessarily aligned with WV directly because we have a lot of influence, you know, in the city council already. The WV has so much influence in this town already. It's good to have somebody who is not against working with the university, but certainly not directly affiliated. Um, I took this upon myself to run because I could see what I'm sure so many people have seen and the level of uh, bickering that it happens, to be frank, in the city council as it is today. And, and a lack of um, real success in getting our infrastructure in order and things like that. We have too much time being spent on useless platitudes, too much time being spent on things that the city council can't affect, too much time on uh, issues that ended up with lawsuits, and then lawsuits amongst themselves. So I think it's really time for us to get a new face in there, and I hope you'll consider me uh, April 12th for early voting and April 25th for uh, the last day of voting. Mr. McAvoy, my name is Stephen LeCagnon, and I am the President and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'll be asking you questions this morning. The first question is, the Transportation Bill, also known as House Bill Number 4009, passed the West Virginia Legislature on March 12 of 2016, and is a priority of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Well, I'd like to say that um, the user fee we have has was done to you know help our roads here in the city, but it's very specific to our city. And, and as Morgantown has continued to sprawl outward, meaning outside of what is the traditional city boundaries of Morgantown, you know, West Run is not in the city bounds, but uh, 14 years ago that was a farm road we have thousands of people living there now we have to start reaching out and, and addressing things as a wider area than just the city so a 1% sales tax at a county level benefits us in a lot of ways it hits all the the outlying areas that are still that, that lead into Morgantown that really people think of as Morgantown but it also I would support that because I feel that that could result in a, in a reduction or removal of the user fee what you have now is a situation where people are penalized for working within the city, and if you can spread that out to a 1% countywide situation, it's fair across the board. It doesn't penalize just people working within the city. It affects people who are working in, uh, you know, Granville, Westover, uh, you know, anywhere outside in the, in the county. The more we can spread it out, the better. The other thing it does, which is really important, is it gives us a chance to reach out and build a relationship with the Mon County Commission. Um, it's really important that the city council start reaching out to some of these other entities. You start reaching out to the Mon County Commission to get things done. Right now, we have a city council that works independent of them. You know, primarily, they don't really reach out a lot. And the better we can build a relationship, uh, the best it is for all of us. Thank you. The concept of an alliance housing project, or housing the uh, Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau under one roof in a central location in Morgantown is a priority of the Chamber. What will you do publicly to promote and advocate for this to become a reality? I think it's a great idea because it saves money. Anytime you can consolidate things into one location, you have less overhead. So the less overhead, it's easier for, uh, you know, expense-wise, but it also makes it easier for someone who wants to, let's say, you know, open a business, someone who wants to make a development. It's a one-stop shop then. You go in, you can get everything done. It makes it a lot easier for anyone who wants to do business in town. It's a great, great idea. And I would push for that just publicly advocating for it. But also, um, I mean, this is kind of a weird tack to say, but 
some people would consider it a negative if you are in your 30s and you don't have family, there's a stigma there. One nice thing that I can say about that is I have more time than other people on the, on the city council would have. I'm working 50 hours a week, but without a, a family, I have the time to go out and reach out to every group that I can. I can reach out to Sunnyside, uh, I can reach out to the you know um, Business Bureau uh, and the um, et cetera. Uh, every organization we listed there, I have the time to reach out and try to you know coordinate and meet with groups and try to publicly spend time. Something that I think the city council doesn't do all the time is they they show up for their meetings and they do some other time, but. You really have to take the time to go out on your own on a daily basis and make phone calls and get in touch with people to get things done. And I'm willing to do that. I'm more than willing to reach out and, and work really hard to try to make things that make sense for the county, or, for, or excuse me, for the city, um, like consolidation of all those entities into one roof uh, happen. Thank you. Next question. What will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro government entity? It kind of goes uh, on with what I was just saying a second ago and what I said with the first question, too, that I, we need to reach out. As Morgantown continues to sprawl outward uh, in, in different directions, you know, um, I, I can remember, like I said originally, West Run was a farm road, and I, I remember before... Uh, the district or anything was built out that direction and now it is spread out so much and University Town Center and everything else you you can't bury your head in the sand and say we're just we're just the Morgantown proper now it, it, I always hear people say it's a pipe dream to have a metro style government it's a it's a pipe dream you know it'll never happen in my lifetime well nothing's ever gonna get done if you always kick it down the road if you say it's never gonna happen you know then why bother you, you'll never accomplish it we have to start making inroads the best way to do that is to start finding some 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 private or um, excuse me some partnerships that you can work out. Reach out to to the Westover City Council. Reach out to the Granville City Council and say, hey, this is some areas where we have overlapping interests on a road, or this is where we have something we can work together and come up with some joint uh, partnerships between the city councils. So when you start doing that, you foster relationship. Granville has no reason to want to be consolidated in Morgantown now. They make a lot of money through University Town Center, um, and they don't they don't have the 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 burdens that we have. We have to start reaching out and making it a reason for them to want to join with us. We have to reach out and get things done. And the best thing to do, start having some joint partnerships. There's a um, civic leaders meeting that happens every now and then, but nothing really gets done from it uh, that I can tell. You know, people meet and they talk, but it's not productive. We got to start being productive with these kinds of things. We have to start um, overlapping our interests. And the more you foster relationship, the more you get things done, the closer with that dream of a, of a metropolitan style government will become accomplishable. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? There's two two schools of thought here. Um, the, the first is that with the Charleston or you know the, the state having some funding issues, not some funding issues, drastic funding issues, um, and we start paving their roads for them, they're going to say, well, we don't ever need to contribute. They got it on their own. The other way to look at it is that again with, with the DOH, we were in a lawsuit with them, and we had to start you know working together and rebuilding that relationship. Um, Governor Tomlin had a uh, committee that was drawn up a while back and they to determine how we, we assessed our funds and how we spread out our funds for DOH money. And basically the determination of that committee was there, there is no set formula, there is nothing like that. It, it comes down to political influence. That's what it comes down to. And us being in a lawsuit with the DOH, something that the, um, uh, they were advised that would cause a lawsuit and they did it anyways, has been really detrimental. It, it, it burned our relation with the DOH, and, and now we need to reach out and say, you know, can we work a split? I, I would hate for us to have to fund it all entirely, but we can't not address the roads. They're terrible, and, and people use them all the time. We, we can't not address them. Can we work a 70-30 split? You know, we'll pay 30, you pay 70. Can we work a 75-25 split? Can we leverage something from our, our own funds, from the user fee or for a 1% sales tax if we got that? Can we leverage it with you to make some sort of partnership? It's going to be very hard for Charleston to sit there and, and not be willing to work a 75-25 or a 70-30 split when nobody else on the, in, the, in the state is offering some kind of split. You're going to say, we can spend 100000 and they'll put up 30000 No one else is offering that split. It saves the, we have to create a situation where it's going to save the state some money in order to help us because otherwise they're never going to come. 
we're, we're an outlier in the state where we are growing and thriving and everywhere else is having economic issues. And, and the influence is down south. So we, we've got to start working out to, to fix that problem one way or the other. Finally, what ideas do you have to improve the economic development and create activity centers within the city of Morgantown since most of the economic development has occurred outside the Morgantown city limits in the last 10 years? We have a situation now where we have things like the user fee, and I understand that those was to help the road, but it, it doesn't affect businesses right outside. We have, uh, you know, B&O taxes, and they, they've floated at certain times, you know, raising taxes and all this and that. The, the more you make it difficult for people to do business in this town, the more businesses are going to go outside of town. And then I just came just, just 30 minutes before this interview from the barbershop, and I was talking to that business owner, and I've talked to other business owners all over. The three things they say the biggest detriment to having businesses downtown in particular is going to be your parking or the perceived lack of parking. It's going to be your issue with the vagrancy and safety and, and, and public safety and, and the traffic to get there. We have to start addressing our parking in downtown. We, we recently changed our parking authority to make it a two-hour zone everywhere downtown and increase the rates. The more difficult you make it for people to come and park downtown, the less likely they are to do it. We don't address the vagrancy issue, and I know that's a difficult one, easier said than done, but there are ways to start addressing it and at least mitigate the problem some. The, the more likely you are to get businesses downtown still. The other area is the, the, the wharf district is underdeveloped in my opinion with the river frontage there and it's very close to downtown and there's that space in between the two that is completely underdeveloped there over past South High Street and over and, and downward towards the Wharf District. If you can start getting some some retail business in there, I understand downtown's primarily an entertainment district at this point, but you have some retail in that blank area over there then you can and create with a walking path you can make both the Wharf District and downtown thrive. The, if you can connect those two uh, and, and the city council can work to try to help promote that, you create a thriving downtown again. You, you know, that whole space is underused and, and underutilized. Thank you, Mr. McAvoy. We have allotted two minutes for you to address the public um, with your own remarks as to what's important to you or anything else. Great. I, uh, I, I think it's really important to say that um, one thing I don't want to do is, is get tied up on ordinances that don't affect things and, and uh, you know, getting into lawsuits and uh, passing, overstepping the bounds of a metropolitan style government. What, what we have now is a city council that's overreaching. They, they've done it repeatedly. And what I want to do is be laser focused, entirely focused on our infrastructure and on promoting business. That is the point of a metropolitan government, is to deal with our roads, is to make sure our paving is in order. Our, our paving contract, by the way, with the user fee, they collected $4 million, uh, $2 million pegged for other uses, and of the $2 million for the roads, roughly, uh, $1 million of it was left in surplus because they couldn't get it done in time. And we, we allowed an extra extension onto the paving contract, and we haven't really addressed that as we should. We have to start getting our ducks in a row. You have to get address our paving, our plowing, our, our, you know, our roads, and we need to address how we increase business, how we make things as business friendly as possible. We have to address some of the some of the positives, but also the negatives of all the public private partnerships. That's the things the metropolitan government should be dealing with, not uh, ordinances uh, for you know carrying in municipal buildings, not uh, you know suing the DOH when we know it's going to result in a lawsuit, not making stances on political and, and social issues. Stick to the, the, the basics of a, of a city. Until we have those in order, we shouldn't be messing with anything else. I promise I will stay laser focused on infrastructure and promoting business. Hi, my name is Rachel Fetty and I am a candidate from First Ward. Um, my husband and I live with our three children near the high school and we have three kids from 11 to 18 and we are committed to Morgantown's growth and success and we are involved at every level, both in church and I'm on the LSIC for Mountain View Elementary School and I serve on some other boards throughout town and we are just um, committed to Morgantown. We've lived here for 10 years and um, it's a part of our life and it's where we've raised our children. Um, as far as my background, um, I grew up in a working class family I'm the oldest of six children, and I grew up in rural Nebraska, um, milking goats. So if anyone needs anyone to do that, I'm, I'm available. Um, one of the questions people ask me all the time is whether I'm married to or related to a Fetty that they know. I had to do some 
uh, digging around when I got here and I found out that I do indeed have a great, great, great forebearer who lived out near Cor uh, in the late 1700s, but I suspect he was forced west by various economic circumstances. But I am not married to any Fetties, just to let those folks off the hook. So I'm happy to talk today about the issues that you've raised, and I really appreciate the questions in the forum because um, this is an important place to discuss these economic issues that I know are a big concern. So have at it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fetty. Um, the first for, question. For, for just for aesthetics, look at me, and okay. we'll keep you in that right there. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're, you're better off doing that. Um, okay. All right. The first question I have for you, Ms. Fetty, is um, about the transportation bill, also known as House Bill 4009. Um, as you know, it was passed by the West Virginia legislature just on March 12, 2016, about a year ago. And it's a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce um, to obtain voter... Let's go back to that question. I'm sorry. That that's I'm not going to do that to her. That's okay. We would roll with it. <laughs> but you good. can we can we just start that question yeah. over again? Yeah, I can even just edit it out, so we can just keep going. Okay, great. So, um, and as you know, it's a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of the one percent sales tax increase to improve the roads and related infrastructure here in Montague County. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Uh, I'm very interested in discussing the possibility of a 1% sales tax uh, for the purpose of addressing the problems on our city and, and uh, on our state roads. Um, I know that the safety fee that Morgantown recently passed has significantly helped Morgantown address our very challenging road situations um, and it's my understanding there's going to be 80 roads done in the first two years which is remarkable so I think that success has been inspiring to the rest of the community and we're absolutely of course interested in improving infrastructure um, having said that Morgantown is the most heavily taxed area in Mon County and any additional taxes will have to be looked at carefully I'm not at all opposed to working with the county commissioners or the MPO or any other entity, and in particular the Chamber of Commerce, um, when we're discussing how to uh, best implement that and how the funds will be used and how to address these issues. Um, I would have to see how the 1% fee or tax would be used, um, but if we can show that that will definitely uh, assist the citizens of Morgantown, I'm very happy to get on board. Um, as a city council member, any our ability to, uh, to encourage folks to take on additional taxes is of course limited to our function, but I'm absolutely committed to spending the time and the effort um, advocating for 1% sales tax if it's going to improve our situation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the second question for you is about the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. Um, it is a priority for the Chamber. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? I'm happy to meet with anyone regarding the pros and cons of this consolidation effort, um, but I think many details have to be addressed, including the possibility that some of these um, different groups have areas of redundancy. And uh, of course that would be one of the benefits if we're able to eliminate redundant functions. Um, that would be a benefit of having those folks uh, meeting the needs of the community under one roof. Um, I, I do think that uh, I, I'm a little bit confused because I, it's my understanding that most of these organizations are nonprofit uh, and that they have individual boards that have their own specific interests um, and they would all have to get on board to be uh, willing to do this. But for those efficiency reasons, I think uh, it's a very positive move and it's something that we could consider. In particular, if we do indeed move it into the boundaries of Morgantown. Um, one of the things I'm very concerned about is the creep of 
important city services and important city activities outside the city uh, into the county. Uh, and I, but I would be much more enthusiastic about this and willing to support it wholeheartedly if we're going to keep it in Morgantown. Thank you. What will you do to publicly and privately promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments, specifically Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City, into a single metro governmental entity? Wow. Well, I have to say, when I saw this question, I was somewhat surprised. Um, to, it's my understanding that it's been several years since that uh, project or that possibility has been formally proposed. And um, there is not a time frame for that kind of consolidation to take place, but it is an interesting possibility. Um, of course, a proposal to unite all of these different municipalities has many details that we would have to work out very carefully. Uh, we do not have consistent laws, we do not have consistent taxes, we do not have consistent funding. Um, and those, of course, are some of the reasons why it would be beneficial in particular for businesses uh, to if there was a more consolidated unified um, approach among these different entities um, if this proposal is formally made i do have to be clear that my primary obligation would be to the citizens of morgantown but if it is made and the data indicates that the consolidation would benefit the citizens of Morgantown and we're able to clearly demonstrate that, um, then I would be very happy to um, participate in every way that I can to encourage that kind of process. Um, but I, I think it does seem as if it would be a bit of a, an uphill struggle. Um, many of these uh, municipalities, they, they have specific and unique interests and they have obligations to their own constituents. Um, I'm committed to working with all of the groups that would be involved, of course, the county and the MPO and any other groups in the chamber uh, in, in looking at this, and I would love to be involved in any planning committee as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown. Oh, well, this is a very, um, that's a very interesting idea. Uh, regarding the issue of using the safety fee to uh, repair state roads, I think we would have to look more, very carefully at how uh, that relationship would take place. Um, one of the concerns that the city of Morgantown has, of course, is that we are um, very heavily taxed, as I mentioned earlier, with the expectation that our services will be better and that um, the services that we receive will be more consistent. The safety fee has been a sacrifice for folks who work in Morgantown. Um, what I think would be helpful in proposing and supporting this kind of measure would be a relationship with the state where we would have more say over what happens on state roads. Of course, one of the difficulties that's been raised in the past is that we have very large asphalt trucks directed through the city on state roads because they're too heavy to drive on federal interstates. Um, if we're going to become responsible or if we're considering becoming responsible for the repair of those roads, I would hope that we would have more say over the traffic on those roads. And it would have to, once again, be a situation that would benefit Morgantown. Thank you. Finally, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create activity centers within the city of Morgantown since most of the economic development has occurred outside the city of Morgantown's limits in the last 10 years? Well, that's a super, that's a very interesting question. And I printed off this beautiful little map, and I apologize if it's a bit hard to see, but um, this is the planning sub, this is the planning map for uh, the county of Vermont County. And if you look here, this is pretty much Morgantown over here. We have some cutouts. All of the colored areas are areas in the county that are part of different planning subdivisions within the within Mon County, um, and as you can see, these areas take up a you know uh, the same or a larger physical area than the city of Morgantown itself. 
um, as we've, you know, as I've mentioned, um, there are only uh, there are only about 30,000 residents in the city of Morgantown, and right now we're very heavily taxed. Um, we provide very substantial services here, libraries, parks, pools, and some of those do receive county funding, but many of them do not. If you look at these planning areas here, what you do not see is the development of that kind of infrastructure. Um, although the county has the right to create that kind of infrastructure. It has not created that kind of infrastructure. And I know that there is some movement within the county to improve that infrastructure, but it, it simply hasn't happened to date. What has happened is that there's very large amounts of commercial development and significant multifamily housing development. And I think one of the things that we have to consider as we look at uh, ways to make Morgantown better are ways that we can make the county better. Um, the county uh, is going to have to invest in this infrastructure. Otherwise, the city of Morgantown is going to continue to bear those costs. My hope is that the city of Morgantown can focus on uh, encouraging the businesses that we have, which are wonderful. We have the best restaurants, the best shops, the most interesting people. So uh, I'm hoping that we can encourage them and we can make these areas more family friendly. Um, I'm hoping that we can encourage family friendly development in the downtown area. And that really, I think, will draw folks back in from this other development without infrastructure that's sucking away both our population and our opportunities. Thank you. This is Thank your you. opportunity now to address the citizens of Morgantown with any other thoughts you may have that you would like to convey. Well, I have three areas that I'm hoping to focus on uh, if I am elected to city council, and I do hope that you will vote for me. The first is the idea that we really want to be a family-friendly community. Uh, we brought our children here and we stay here because we want to be a family-friendly community. And that means making businesses family-friendly, that means making our cities and our city streets family-friendly, it means maintaining the infrastructure that is such a beautiful part of Morgantown's culture. Our parks, our pools, uh, the areas where families congregate together to, to build a community. The second issue that I would like to address is the issue of safety. Um, at a floor, I think our children should be able to walk to school. They should be able to uh, walk safely to school without being accosted on the street. They should be able to walk safely to school um, on safe sidewalks and on uh, safe and and, uh, in, and have the ability to just enjoy childhood activities without fear of unnecessary traffic on residential roads. Um, and finally, um, of course, we really are always focusing on infrastructure here because that's just fundamental to both the job of the city and um, my hope for our future because really the infrastructure development will lead to greater economic opportunity and more economic development. And finally, um, as part of all of those issues, one thing that I'm hoping to focus on is affordable housing. That is really the most critical economic issue that I see here. Um, our employees are driving very far uh, often because they cannot afford to live here. So I'm hoping to encourage that over the next two years. So please vote for me. First word, Rachel Fetty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the Chamber for uh, uh, doing this uh, on behalf of the public and uh, working to help uh, the public learn as much about the candidates and the issues leading into the election. That's, I think, a very important uh, thing you're doing there. So I, I, I thank the, the uh, Chamber for their efforts and for allowing me to participate. Uh, my name is Jay Redmond. Uh, I am the, currently the sixth ward council person for the city of Morgantown. I'm a third generation uh, lifelong resident of Morgantown. I went to Morgantown High School. Uh, I have two degrees from WVU. I attended the WVU College of Law. And uh, I've worked throughout the community in many different capacities. I've worked in the private sector. I've worked in the nonprofit sector. Uh, I've worked in the public sector. Uh, I've built five successful small businesses in Morgantown. And I have uh, managed many projects and large events in the community that, that, uh, some that are continuing to be run uh, to this day. Um, I got into uh, my interest in city council comes from my father who was on city council in the 1970s and uh, this is the time in my life where I feel that I can give something back to my community and I'm, I'm eager to do that and I've enjoyed my first two years and I would like to continue. Thank you. 
The first question we have for you concerns the transportation bill, also known as House Bill 4009, which, as you know, passed the West Virginia Legislature on March 12, 2016. It is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose, if anything? Uh, well, I have certainly paid a lot of attention to this issue uh, moving forward. It certainly uh, it is an attempt to address a very uh, a dire uh, need and concern that we, uh, we have in the community. Um, I congratulate the legislature and especially our local delegation for uh, bringing this forward and I know that this uh, legislation uh, did come you know, from this area was the impetus of it. Uh, I certainly support the uh, idea of more local control uh, and uh, uh, less, de de less centralized control from the state of West Virginia. This, uh, so local initiative, I support that concept 100%. Um, very similar to uh, you know, home rule that we are dealing with on city council it allows municipalities uh, a little more flexibility in dealing with issues spe specific to their community and this, this will allow uh, the county uh, and the residents to deal with the issues that are specific to, to the county. Um, I do agree with the requirement within the law that uh, requires voter referendum. I think everybody should have a stake in the process and uh, should have their voice be heard. So, uh, and I, I do understand that the chamber will be bringing this forward for the public's uh, review and uh, approval, and I, uh, I certainly would stand behind that uh, approval. And uh, as far as what I can do personally, uh, you know, to help support and advocate on behalf of this uh, piece of legislation would be to speak publicly at council. Uh, in favor of it, which I certainly will do. And I would certainly vote in favor of a re resolution uh, if council would want to put one forward in support of this uh, endeavor. And uh, I think I can advocate to constituents through educating them about the process. I think that's going to be very important. If people, I think people understand what it is they're paying for, uh, they're much more likely to support it. And I think certainly roads and infrastructure is something that people uh, are interested in. Thank you. Our second question concerns the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. It's a priority for the Chamber. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality, if anything? Uh, well, generally, I, I uh, support uh, any effort to uh, try to create efficiencies uh, in operations. Um, I, I uh, support the concept of what uh, the Chamber is uh, pushing forward with uh, in relation to the Alliance, but I, I do feel like I do need to hear some more facts about it uh, to understand it a little better. Uh, again, I, I understand the uh, convenience aspect of it, the efficiencies that will be created, but I do have some questions about the operation and management of that uh, entity, especially as it relates to the autonomy of the organizations that will be part of it and whether they will still uh, retain their autonomy uh, in order to make decisions uh, uh, that regard their operations and their missions. Uh, I guess my other question regarding it would uh, have to do with some of the funding issues that would be associated with it since the city, I am on city council and the city does currently uh, provide funding to some of these entities. Uh, there are some questions that, relates, that relate to that. But uh, anything we can do to make it easier for businesses uh, and industries and anybody interested uh, in coming to Morgantown and getting involved, uh, uh, the better. And uh, certainly the concept promotes a sort of a one-stop shopping sort of uh, idea, and I'm very much in favor of that. Thank you. Our third quest question concerns um, the consolidation of local governments. So what will you do to privately and publicly promote and advocate for the consolidation of the local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro governmental entity, if anything? Well, I find this a very, I find this the most interesting of all your questions. 
Um, this is sort of the third rail of the community, if you uh, if you ask me. Now, if I was running, if I was running uh, as a council person in Westover, or Star City, or Granville, my answer might be different. Uh, but I generally and uh, absolutely support the concept of metro government uh, for our area. I have uh, uh, stated that in public before, and uh, I absolutely support it. I know that this is a very parochial community. People are very proud of their of their municipalities, and they should be. And uh, but I do think there is a way to move forward forward with uh, all the municipalities remaining their retaining their identity uh, and the uniqueness that they bring to the community, and still finding a way to uh, uh, work together. I mean, you know, the whole the whole end result of uh, metro government is to provide uh, better services at a lower cost to the residents, and uh, we don't need five police chiefs and uh, six fire chiefs and. It just doesn't really make any sense when you look at it as small a community as we are, really, just geographically, we're not that large. Uh, where those ideas might come forward, I mean, they have been uh, mentioned at the Community Leadership Forum before. Uh, that's probably a good place uh, to start, perhaps. And I'd be willing to advocate for a local um, summit, or whatever word uh, you would want to call it, to bring together all the, all the players uh, to start that kind of conversation. I think the best way to succeed would be to start with some of the small things like the purchase of asphalt or salt, uh, which are some things that all the municipalities are and there are economies of scale there. If we purchased all together, we would, uh, we would all save money. Uh, and I think little steps is the way to, uh, is the way to get there. So it's to start with smaller, smaller items. And the key, I think, is, uh, again, is just to uh, make sure that every community uh, retains its identity, which I think is uh, totally doable and uh, uh, a wise way to move forward. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by the Morgantown user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? Oh, that's an interesting question, and uh, in theory I can certainly support this, and uh, I think the citizens uh, would support this. Um, we have made some efforts uh, in that regard before, uh, regarding even treating uh, some of these state roads that run through the city and in even doing just very minor pothole repairs. Uh, we generally have been rebuffed uh, in that, in that, uh, in, uh, with those requests. So we, we definitely have a lot of, uh, we have to go a long way with the DOH before they're going to let uh, that occur. But as I said, I would generally support using some of the money. Now, your question says the word... Uh, improve. So I, it, improve's not really defined. So for me, I would have to understand a little bit more what improve means. Uh, I don't, I'm not interested in taking the user fee money and paving the city roads or paving the state roads that run through the city. But in terms of minor repairs, uh, you know, winter ice and snow treatment, uh, other smaller issues, uh, 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 gullies or uh, uh, forgetting the word now, you know, the thing that runs beside the road. Uh, culverts, uh, dealing with those kind of issues, uh, I, would, I would definitely support that. And finally, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create activity centers within the city of Morgantown since most of the economic development has occurred outside Morgantown city limits within the last 10 years? Well, I think the chambers, you know, doing a good job. I think from the city standpoint, since we're talking about a city election and city council candidates, I think really the number one thing we can do is spend more time on it. Uh, I think we've put a woefully inadequate amount of time into uh, economic development. Uh, perhaps it's even uh, time for us to look at uh, what the feasibility and, and uh, uh, wisdom of hiring a, our own economic development director would be. For the city of Morgantown. So I think that's really the number one thing is we really need to put more time and effort into it. Um, we, we need to uh, get out there and market and sell the city and actively seek uh, people to come in here based on the opportunities that we have. And then once we get them here uh, and we get people interested, we need to be a partner with them all the way through the process and, and make it as easy for them as possible. Uh, that's generally my view on it. Now, I think we need to continue to position ourselves and create the conditions that will create economic growth, and that would be things like uh, make sh you know, dealing with our dilapidated buildings and looking at all the spaces that we have within the city boundaries uh, that we can improve uh, and you know, uh, present to somebody as a place where they, they might create a, a, a business. Um, 
We can even uh, continue to try to do some incentive, uh, offering some incentives to promote development, very much like this sort of mini TIF district we just did uh, out off of uh, Route 705 across from Suncrest Town Center. Um, as far as the things that are going on currently, uh, we have to work very, very hard to complete the current airport project in Business Park. That is the future of Morgantown. And uh, we have to uh, get that thing to the finish line and beyond because uh, I think that will chart the uh, future economic uh, 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 future economic viability of our, of our city. So uh, that's what I think about uh, economic development. Thank you. At this time, we're allotted 10 minutes to allow you to um, speak to the voters uh, with anything else that is on your mind that you think they should hear from you. Okay, two minutes. Yes. You said 10. I'm so sorry. You don't, you don't want to give me 10 minutes because I, I, I could do that. I don't no, give, no, no, no. Don't worries. want to give anybody 10 minutes. No, Let's go with no, two. No worries. Uh, I have a very simple view of municipal government. I think it's about quality services, uh, smart growth, strong relationships, vital neighborhoods. Those are, those are what... Uh, People are interested in fire, police, trash, you know, the streets. I mean, that's what it's really about. Um, I have uh, spent two years on council. My philosophy uh, in regards to how I look at every decision I have to make in every situation is to try to create the best possible outcome for the greatest number of citizens and do so by re representing the values of the entire community as a whole. I try to put my own personal opinions aside oftentimes, and I try not to let my emotions or feelings uh, uh, cloud uh, what our judgments and decisions that need to be made based need to be made based based on facts and reason uh, and logic. Uh, I think I have the right experience to be on city council. I think I have the right uh, accomplishments to show. Uh, I know how to get things done. I've shown that. I think I have the right skill set to continue to succeed as a council member, and I think I have the right motivation. So I hope uh, people will. Uh, come out and vote in the city election on April 25th and uh, mark my name. And thank you very much. Good morning, sir. My name is Steve LeCagnon and I am the president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And today we are giving city council candidates the opportunity to address the public for two minutes uh, with whatever they would like to say by way of an introduction to themselves. And then we'll ask you five questions allotting two minutes for each answer, and then finally a closing statement to the public. So if you want to proceed to introduce yourself, we'd appreciate it. Well, thank you. I'm Wes Nugent. I'm the third ward city council member for the city of Morgantown, and I'm standing for re-election to advocate for good local government. That is, government providing high-quality services in demand by taxpayers and citizens at the best value and rate possible. Uh, a little bit about myself for those of you who may have not had a chance to meet me. I've lived in Morgantown my entire adult life, and for the past 14 years, I've been a resident homeowner in Morgantown in the Wilds Hill Highland Park neighborhood. I'm a sixth generation West Virginian who's proudly raising the seventh generation here in Morgantown, and my wife Carrie and I have been married for about seven years. We have a son who's three and a half years old, Joseph, and we're proud to have a daughter who is going to be born between now and Election Day here in the coming month. So we're really excited to be adding to uh, Morgantown's demographics. I work with West Virginia University as a technologist. I've been here for 17 years in that career. And I serve people in the university's outreach mission who may never come to Morgantown. That is farmers, 4-H'ers, uh, civic leaders, people out in our state who take advantage of the university's resources and put those to use in their own community. So I'm proud to use my experience and knowledge and continue my service to the city of Morgantown. Thank you, sir. The first question we have for you concerns the transportation bill, also known as House Bill 4009, which, as you know, passed the West Virginia legislature in March of 2016. It is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose, if anything? As past chairman of the Morgantown Monongalia Metropolitan Planning Organization, I remain focused on the long-term transportation goals in our community and what's required to fund those needs over the next 20 to 40 years. As a member of the Morgantown City Council, I would continue to support and advocate 
the chambers work with various stakeholder groups to seek voter approval of a 1% sales tax for improved roads and infrastructure countywide. Structured countywide, such a tax provides for the most good to the greatest number of people in and beyond Morgantown in ways that can significantly improve our future outlook. I will say though, in talking with stakeholders during my campaign, I'm mindful of the cumulative effect that tax and fee increases city residents and businesses have had in a short period of time over the last two years have had an impact. And to that point, residents and businesses can have confidence in the future that as a member of the Morgantown City Council, I would not support adding an additional 1% city sales tax on top of a countywide sales tax at this time. And if a city 1% city sales tax was to be pursued by city council in the future, I would advocate for not only reducing the business and occupation taxes as mandated, but beyond that, would support restructuring the user fee to provide greater equity. Thank you. The second question concerns the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, and the Econ Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, as well as the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. It is a priority of the Chamber. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? Anytime organizations can come together under one roof, it provides an opportunities for better working together to accomplish both respective and shared goals. To that end, I support the concept of an alliance that allows civic organizations that have been named and possibly others yet unidentified to work together for the benefit of the greater Morgantown community. To remain responsive and accountable to their stakeholder mission groups, vision and goals, I believe organizations involved in an alliance would still main, need to maintain individual autonomy to their respective governing boards. But the cost savings that can be realized, not to mention the informal collaboration that will naturally result, can yield great net positive effect for our community. I can say that as a member of City Council, I would advocate for City Council setting aside any realized shared cost savings that come from an alliance to better fund specific and initiatives and programs that are goals that have been identified between the alliance and the City of Morgantown. Thank you. What will you do to privately and publicly promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments in Morgantown? Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro governmental entity, if anything. As City City Councilor, I have come to know many of our local neighbors outside of city limits, personally as friends, and I've developed trust in those relationships that will allow me to work with our local neighbors in the future. As municipal leaders, we must all continue building personal and formal relationships to take steps in finding shared benefits, specifically cost savings, that will lead to confidence. In Morgantown, uh, much of the name and identity that we have is something that everyone shares. And I believe metropolitan government can be achieved within the means of what's provided in Morgantown's charter as well as state law without sacrificing individual community identities. And if the greater Morgantown community wants to pursue other avenues for finding paths to metropolitan government, I will support those efforts and put those to the Morgantown voters for their consideration. If Morgantown as a municipality is to thrive, though, I believe our city must reliably demonstrate that the city provides value in our in-demand public services and confidence in the reliability of those services. In the long term, I will say that better sharing the responsibility of our local tax burden must remain a priority for city council if Morgantown is to remain affordable and attractive, as well as to continue a high quality of life. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? To improve state roadways within Morgantown city limits, I believe the next city council, in conjunction with our new city manager, must first work to restore confidence and trust with our state partners in Charleston. As a member of Morgantown City Council, I would support the City of Morgantown's efforts to work with State Division of Highways and other partners to make timely, meaningful improvements to city streets that connect with state routes 
when improvements to those state routes are made by our state partners. And if an equitable and satisfactory agreement can be worked out with Charleston, I would also support the city of Morgantown setting aside a portion of the streets related monies to be used to make quick immediate repairs and patches of state routes to then have those monies reimbursed and replenished by the state division of highways. Thank you. Last question. What ideas do you have to improve the economic development of Morgantown and, the, and to create activity centers within the city of Morgantown since most of the economic development has occurred outside Morgantown city limits within the last 10 years? Well, the city airport should be on everyone's radar right now because that's the project that has the single most potential to create not only viable uh, airport, but long-term real economic development that spurs growth within Morgantown city limits. The potential land tracks near our city airport are on par with the acreage of Tabler Station near Martinsburg that landed Procter & Gamble recently. And Morgantown has the selling point that our city is in an apex of east, east west, west, and north-south interstates, which easily puts us in good connection with much of the east coast and midwest. Outside the airport, the new city council, as well as the new city manager, must remain focused on meaningful infill development that brings commercial benefits so that residents don't find themselves traveling more and more outside of the city's limits to obtain essential goods and services. Consumer trends and shopping studies conducted by Main Street Morgantown should be used by the city of Morgantown in supporting efforts not only to revitalize downtown, but as blueprints for spurring similar smaller efforts elsewhere, like in Saberton and along Pattison Drive. Given the challenges the city has experienced with implementing the 2013 Comprehensive Plan to date, I believe the city of Morgantown has to prepare a canvas for successful economic development by providing greater reliability for developers for what will fit in the box according to city code and seek to minimize the number of variances that are asked for in the process. Otherwise, City Council must continue to place emphasis on updating city code to better reflect the intent of the 2013 Comprehensive Plan to realize more successful infill development. With more attention and focus to these areas, I believe Morgantown can remain vibrant and thrive economically with businesses that serve our permanent and temporary residents as well as visitors. More than just economic development in the form of bricks and mortar though, Morgantown as a community, given our young energized base, needs to encourage greater entrepreneurship so as to become West Virginia that produces successful ideas that can be replicated across our state. Thank you. Mr. Nugent, this is your opportunity to take two minutes to address the public with any other thoughts and ideas you might have concerning uh, your candidacy. Well, thank you, Mr. LeCagnon, as well as to the Morgantown Area of Chamber of Commerce for hosting this opportunity and permitting me to engage your stakeholders as well as voters prior to this important upcoming election in the city of Morgantown. In closing, let me mention a few recent public service accomplishments of which I'm particularly proud. I fixed blue curb parking for neighbors. I have one for single family homeowners over upzoning. I've kept polling places open and close to where citizens and voters live in our city neighborhoods. I've clarified needs and got city action for residents and stakeholders. And I've successfully bridged residents and stakeholders with police, streets, code, and other services and information. It's important for us to continue to have strong leadership at the local level that can work well with county and state partners. And I'm part of that team. Again, I'm Wes Nugent from Morgantown's Third Ward, and I'm asking for your vote to keep me and send me back to City Hall so that I can continue serving as your voice for good local government. Mr. Kowecki, my name is Steve LeCagg, and I am the President and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And um, this is your opportunity to address the public for two minutes about any thoughts concerning your candidacy for City Council. Uh, <laughs> well, I am uh, Bill Kowecki. I am currently the uh, Deputy Mayor. I'm the representative from the 2nd Ward. Uh, I've been uh, on council for the last two terms. That puts me there for four years. And I'm coming back to run again for a third term. Uh, currently, uh, I 
<laughs> excuse me, I have my, uh, I should have turned off my, my uh, phone, but I didn't. In any case, uh, I'm currently on the Historic Landmarks Commission. I'm on the Housing Advisory Board. I'm on the Planning Commission, Sunnyside Up. I participate in Rivertown. Uh, I've been on the Main Street Board. I am the Vice President of uh, Arts Mon. Uh, and I'm very concerned or very involved in our neighborhood. My uh, whole attitude in running was the idea of, of creating quality of life and, and maintaining that quality of life in Morgantown. I've been a participant in, in, uh, and past president of uh, the South Park Association of Neighbors. Uh, I have been involved with city government before. I've been the chair of the, uh, the BZA. The, the Board of Zoning Appeals. I was one of the co-founders of the original uh, recycling effort uh, in Morgantown way back when. Uh, we started it off before the city took it on. Uh, so I've been a participant in the community. I've been an advocate for the community and, and I hope to continue that. Thank you, sir. Our first question concerns the tra transportation bill, also known as House Bill Number 4009, which, as you know, passed the West Virginia Legislature on March 12 of 2016. It's a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce uh, to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax under the House Bill 4009 uh, to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montegay County. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Well, any opportunity I have to support the idea of improving our infrastructure is something that I would support most wholeheartedly and speak out for and have in the past. I am an advocate for planning. I think that's one of the things that uh, we suffered in the past. It, uh, I was, I'm quite happy that uh, the city's moved in the direction it's has. It, with, with what we've done with the comprehensive plan, with the way we're addressing our zoning ordinances, with the way we've implemented our TIF, and the successes that we've had, particularly in Sunnyside. Uh, those are things that uh, I think speak very well of the idea of being an active participant. Uh, there will be people who don't like the idea of the tax, but unfortunately, uh, given the circumstances of state budget and, and the kinds of uh, cooperation that we've managed to achieve among the entities here, we have a path forward, and, and, and I would speak for that and be an advocate for that uh, is in, in as many venues as I possibly can. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Our second question concerns the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. This is one of the Chamber's priorities. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? Well, I agree with the concept. Uh, the idea of efficiencies of scale, that's, uh, that's very appropriate. That's something that we should look for in, in all cases. We're, we're looking to move forward together cooperatively. Uh, we have too many people who are building uh, silos that uh, are protecting turf, and, and we really need to get well beyond that. We need to, to do much more in terms of cooperation, uh, is an old thing. Matter of fact, it was one of the things in the Marine Corps that was taught to us is they would send us over and try to pick up a log. And, and you would try to do that and struggle on your own, trying to do your best so your, your drill sergeant didn't come at you. But uh, after that, they'd, they'd send over the fire team. And the fire team was a group of four, and that log came up very easily. That's a good lesson to learn. Uh, the cooperation really does help, and we do move things forward. So. Uh, and I particularly like the idea of uh, the location that uh, this is proposed to. So I'm familiar with the, the territory and I'd, I'd love to see the, the activity downtown and, and uh, I'm looking forward to that cooperation. Now, having said that, 
let me qualify that these individual organizations perform vital functions and they need to nurture their own agenda to some degree. But we should look for areas of cooperation. Thank you. Our third question concerns uh, uh, the metro governmental uh, concept, which is um, now circulating more strongly throughout the community, this idea. What will you do privately and publicly, if anything, to promote and advocate for the consolidation of the local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single governmental metro entity? Uh, the idea of metro government's been around for quite some time, as you mentioned. Uh, I think it was first introduced to the, to the legislature back in 2005, 2006. Uh, I was familiar with it, made familiar with it when I first came on, and, and actually had done some talking with Tom Witt and a few other people who are uh, in favor of the concept. Uh, again, I'll go back to the idea of cooperation is, is appropriate, you know, where we can cooperate and, and create efficiencies. Uh, that's, that's a very good thing. We need to do that. Uh, but there are certain things that each organization is concerned about and we need to take those concerns into consideration. We need to somehow cooperate uh, without threatening or usurping anybody else's uh, uh, authority or territory. Uh, we need a path forward and we need one that's agreed upon. We need one that people will come together and, and, and uh, collaborate with and, and, and move things forward in that manner. We need a structure that can be identified and uh, it's not something that will be done quickly, nor is it something that should uh, uh, just simply be dictated. It, it needs to be something that's negotiated and, and agreed upon and move forward, move forward in some sort of reasonable structure where possible. And if we, uh, we run into an obstacle where we can't agree, well, uh, perhaps it's not appropriate for our needs. But I think it's, uh, it's, it's well worth looking at, for sure. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? Well, in, in fact, we, we already do. Uh, we are uh, constantly, or not constantly, but we do frequently, go out and, and repair the, the potholes and, and uh, the difficulty that uh, the VOH can't get to immediately. Uh, we've done that in the past. We probably will continue to do that in the future. We, we work cooperatively with the DOH on those kinds of activities. As to making that a priority for our, our service fee, no. Uh, that service fee was dedicated for two purposes, and that two purposes were to take care of our streets, city streets, which are significant. Before this, in, in previous budgets, it would have taken us 32 years to do the streets in our city once. At this particular right now, we'll be able to get to the streets and, and on, on, on a regular basis, and, and we should be able to complete them within 10 years. That's a significant change. Plus, also, we're bringing on 10 new police officers, and that's something that uh, is really necessary for our city, for our police force, for the retention of our police force, for the safety of our city. Now that that service fee is serving us well, and uh, I believe that we should use it for the purposes that we we promised that we would. So uh, certainly, I'm willing to cooperate, but uh, we need to be careful what that cooperation is. Thank you. The final question we have for you today is: What ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within? the city of Morgantown, since most of the economic development over, over the last 10 years has occurred outside Morgantown's city limits? Oh, we have some real jewels in Morgantown. We really do. Our riverfront is uh, very, uh, very appropriate for, for development. That's going to make uh, a significant difference here. We need to, to look at the riverfront. We need to develop along the riverfront. We're already cooperating with uh, uh, Rivertown. I'm active in that. We've been uh, 
uh, working with uh, Benenham, we've been working with uh, uh, River Life. Uh, but beyond that, uh, even so, uh, the way we use our TIFs, the way we improve our in infrastructure, the way we address our uh, regulations, the way we interface with, with developers in terms of uh, making things as seamless as possible, uh, we suffer from some things that uh, the county doesn't in terms of our BNO and construction and people will have a tendency to build outside because it's a little cheaper for them. We need to look for incentives and we need to give them reasons to build here. And our TIFs do that and our, uh, our location does that. In, in our, uh, we need to take advantage of things like the river that uh, <laughs> you can't move to another location to take advantage of. So. Thank you. At this time, uh, you are allotted two minutes, as are all the candidates, to tell the public any thoughts you might have concerning your candidacy or anything else. Well, I, I'd suggest that you look at what we've been able to achieve. Uh, I know it, uh, at times uh, it's been controversial. Uh, there are always other opinions. It ends up being much more political than I ever expected it to be. When I came on, I thought that uh, it was a matter of getting together and doing what was good for the community. And it is that, but it is also uh, a matter of uh, uh, considering other people's uh, perspectives and points of views. My concept here is that what we really need to do is be, uh, bring these activities, these questions, these problems, to public attention and, and work towards common solutions. We need to have perspectives from all sides and we need cooperation. Uh, you can't really solve a problem if you really can't define what that problem is and you really can't define what that problem is unless you have all the inputs to give you some sort of indication of uh, <laughs> what you really need to do to address the problem. And and I hope that I can, uh, I can do that. I'm very uh, I'm very grateful for what I found here in this community. I'd like to preserve that sense of community. Uh, and if you give me the opportunity, uh, I promise I'll work to that in that direction. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Steve Lecagne, and I am the current president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And we're here today for the purpose of presenting candidates to the public, uh, for candidates for city council. Um, this is your opportunity for the next two minutes to introduce yourself to the city of Morgantown and uh, to tell them a little bit about yourself. Please take it. So my name is Jenny Celine. Uh, I've been on city council for 10 years. I retain my enthusiasm and uh, for Morgantown and for uh, the position that I currently hold in the fourth ward on city council. And I'm asking uh, for people to consider voting for me again. Uh, I moved here about 24 years ago with my family. I have uh, a husband, Steve, and three children who are now grown. Uh, and so they're in their 20s. And now I have a two-year-old grandson. So I'm becoming more familiar with uh, some of the toddler issues in Morgantown. I uh, have always been a big supporter of both the, the neighborhood side of Morgantown and the business side of Morgantown. I am in favor of uh, infill development and quality uh, quality development in Morgantown and I'm also in favor of uh, retaining the excellent character of our neighborhoods and working on issues like uh, improving our parks department uh, which I currently serve on and on their board and uh, other issues in Morgantown to make it one of the best possible places to live both in West Virginia and and uh, in the entire United States so uh, as everyone knows we're a college town uh, we also have a significant uh, hospital and uh, federal facilities, and we also have a nice business climate. So I'm happy to be here with the Chamber and uh, talking about the issues that matter to the Chamber and that matter to the citizens of Morgantown. Thank you. Our first question for you today is concerning the Transportation Bill, also known as House Bill 4009, passed by the West Virginia Legislature in March of 2016. As you may know, it is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase authorized by the bill to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. 
What, if anything, will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? So a tiny bit of background about me. Uh, I have been on the Transportation Committee through this process, so I uh, advocated at the legislature with a group from the chamber uh, to bring about this uh, possibility of 1% in our county. I also have been recently down with the chamber and, and trying to uh, continue uh, this process, and, and uh, there are some concerns that if the legislature approves an 8% sales tax that this we may have to be uh, working on other angles um, besides this 1%. But as far as the 1% goes, uh, right now uh, the Transportation Committee is working on kind of the overall plan and, and I'm part of that group and I'm participating in that group. Uh, I also am concerned that we look at uh, how this in impacts municipalities because Right now, I serve on on uh, municipality uh, council, and there there are other 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 municipalities in our area, uh, as well as the county. So I think we need to really step up and all work together to develop this plan so that it is something that voters will approve, and we will have the benefit in our area, because we are one large area, and we need to figure out how best to work together and how best to um, make sure that we get as many uh, roads done as well as possible and also figure out ways that we can leverage state funds. So the way that this 1% will work the best is if we can leverage state funds and federal funds uh, for our roads. So we would hopefully still retain whatever allocation we would normally receive from the state, but we would use this 1% to get some added benefits in our area uh, as a big economic engine and um, important area in our state. So, thank you. Thank you. The <clears throat> concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, Montague County Development Authority, and the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, as well as the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau under one roof in a central location in Morgantown, is a priority for the Chamber of Commerce. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? So my understanding is a similar concept that's the Alliance in Charleston has been a huge success for that area. And I would certainly uh, advocate for these groups to plan and work together um, while still making sure that their separate functions uh, continue in our area. I think that all of these groups are very, very important here and uh, I would want to make sure that their separate functions would still continue. Uh, I've attended uh, just a few meetings about this issue uh, and I've asked questions and I know that they're working on kind of re refining the concept as it applies here. As far as um, some of the benefits to our area if this would come to pass and some of the actions that I would advocate for would be cost efficiencies, um, some of the increased benefits and outputs for the community that could happen if we have these organizations all kind of working in some of the same directions. Uh, I think that we could possibly serve more individuals, neighborhoods, businesses with these services and also kind of maybe by having them work together share some of the lists that they work from and share some of the uh, ability to have events or have public hearings or ha have uh, different moments when they need more than the one or two persons that work with each organization now I think that that could be a huge that could be a huge benefit and also coordinating calendars and some of the other uh, opportunities that we could have so I don't know whether it will all happen at once I'm sure that's the goal but if it could happen in some steps or some some uh, maybe not everyone can get out of their lease at the same time to occupy a building at the same time but if if uh, if it can't come across perfectly right at the beginning I would hope that over time people could figure out ways to work together thanks thank you what will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments in Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro governmental entity. Now there's a task. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my understanding of this um, process and, and looking at it uh, from a state level and then going back to the local level, I know that at the state level they're looking at consolidation of potentially of counties and also consolidation of cities. Uh, and the idea of metro government can be at an even larger multi-county scale um, and can, can work kind of in layers with other layers of government. So it could be that we will end up um, at some point with a metro government that would include several counties and that would allow us to apply for large projects. I like to see how we can figure out how to think big. And so looking at infrastructure, looking at um, roadways, uh, river projects, um, bridges, large water and sewer projects, uh, some projects uh, we're not eligible for right now due to our smaller scale compared to other places in the country. Uh, on the local scale, we would need to meet with our fellow cities who all have um, expansion projects underway. So we're in an era of prosperity here. And I would like to continue the prosperity by working together, but um, people have these large projects and TIFs underway and we'd have to figure out how to work together um, on a regional level. Uh, right now, we uh, work with the MMPO on transportation planning and we do that very well and we include um, the bus system, the university, the cities, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, and the county, it's, it's, it's a large um, group working together on regional transportation planning with lots of nice trans transparency and people being able to attend hearings and learn about what's going on. Uh, I've read some of the historical ideas of Brooks McCabe uh, and heard him recently in Charleston speaking on the subject. And there are a lot of important aspects, once again, uh, such as pooling uh, technology, um, services, efficiencies, but he talks about not pushing so hard that we drive entities away from the idea. So somehow I think we need to figure out some, some basic beginning steps and, and areas for cooperation, and, and I, we haven't had the important conversations at the local level yet to take advantage of this possibility. So I'm hoping that we can uh, have some uh, look at some examples in other areas, work with our constituents, work uh, amongst the cities, just have the cities sit down together and have conversations, and I'd be willing to advocate for all of those things, and I cannot guarantee results, but I would definitely guarantee some effort in this direction. Next question. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? So um, on the basic level, I voted uh, to increase funding specifically for roads in Morgantown. And uh, I believe that we've already allocate, um, allocated some funds to improve state-owned roads. Uh, specifically, I think Dorsey's, uh, Dorsey Avenue, uh, Windsor, uh, and we would need to further work with the state and the DOH to move that further. Um, we could have some impact on the state roads uh, by, by putting in some of our own funds. But uh, obviously, we don't have the funding uh, currently available to cover the state's obligation in our area. Um, we're working on 80 streets right now between last year and this year, and we're very proud of that. But um, I think we could make some impact on state roads, and I know that different times we've definitely patched state potholes, uh, depending upon what the DIGWH thought and what our, whatever the man whoever our city manager was at a given time. So... I think that we could work work on that, but uh, it, it will not cover the obligation that the state has in our area. Our final question for you today is, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city of Morgantown, since most of the economic development has occurred outside of Morgantown's city limits within the last 10 years? So right now we have a certain size of city. Uh, we have pretty small city limits compared to the growth that's going on around the city. So <clears throat> first area that we've been working on and that we will continue to work on is infill development, redevelopment in certain areas. We've been working with the Brownfields group on some of the level one and level two uh, studies so that property can be redeveloped so that we know if there happen to be con contaminants there or not, which often there it looks more daunting than it is, and so then it makes the property more ripe for redevelopment. Uh, 
the airport, we're working on a huge park there. Uh, it started off uh, with the concept of 95 acres and now uh, it will be 300 acres or so, uh, I understand. And some of these, some of these uh, areas, like for instance, the airport commerce park as, as one node, uh, we'd be capitalizing on the airport. We could look strategically at some interconnected businesses that have to do with um, international trade zones or other kinds of um, possibilities where the businesses are interconnected and we can take advantage of having this large space. Um, then we could also look at some annexation of adjacent areas and methodically bringing those areas into the city. They often take advantage of city services. And so to have an area just outside the city, I think we should be uh, methodically inviting, inviting businesses in, working with businesses. Um, we have different business areas currently in the city, such as in Saberton. And that area has been recently organizing a little bit over the last couple of years. They put up some Christmas lights and did some things working together. Evansdale has a huge number of employers in that area, and I think we need to work with them to see, for instance, they've mentioned uh, river, uh, pardon me, they've mentioned uh, recreation as an issue, that if, if their employees would prefer to be recreating in another area, we could lose that business to another place. So we need to up, up our game, up the city's game, and also work on connections between, say, the university and some of the adjacent businesses so that there isn't a guardrail in between and people can can walk and uh, get back and forth to use um, to use the businesses that are in the city. Thank you. Uh, we would appreciate it if you would now take this opportunity to tell the citizens of Morgantown um, whatever you would like to tell them concerning your candidacy, yourself, or some of your other ideas. Well, I'm someone who works with a diverse group of people. I work with the Chamber of Commerce. I work with uh, Parks and Recreation. I'm interested in uh, retirees who are wanting to live in, and retire in Morgantown. I'm also interested in young families and, and, uh, and meeting their needs. Uh, I'm very excited about waterfront development, which I didn't get to get to talk about in that last question as much as I might, but I'm really interested in riverfront development and there's sort of a hole in the worst wharf district and figuring out how to revitalize that TIF and and uh, get get more um, business activity going on there. So I can see that there's lots of opportunity in Morgantown and there's lots of uh, promise and I think we just need to work together with uh, all of the different entities that are here and make sure that we can uh, move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Wallace. My name is Steve LeCagg and I am the President and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And as you know, we're here today to ask questions of the candidates that are running for this uh, City Council election that's upcoming. Uh, if you would uh, take a few minutes to introduce yourself and tell the public anything else they need to know uh, about you. Um, we'd appreciate that. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the opportunity. I do appreciate that the Chamber of Commerce is hosting these uh, videos, and I think it's a valuable community outreach tool here. Um, my name is Ryan Wallace. I'm running for City Council in Ward 3. Um, I'm a community member in the Wiles Hill neighborhood. I live up behind the law school and my ward includes the Wiles Hill neighborhood and uh, most of High Street. I'm running for city council because I've always been involved in my community. Um, I, in 2005, I got a master's degree in community development. And since that time, I've had the opportunity to work in a number of community development projects and programs. And wherever I go, I like to be involved. So that's that's my primary uh, motivation and background. I want to be involved in Morgantown. I want to make this city the best it can be. I know it's great already, but I think it can be even better. I'm currently a second year law student at the WVU College of Law. I'm studying West Virginia statutes and ordinances and really enjoying that. Um, I'm also on a full ride, so I'm able to do some public interest law on the side. Uh, last summer I worked for Senior Legal Aid here on High Street. And this summer I'll be at the Land Use Clinic at the College of Law, uh, working on some municipal planning and zoning uh, legal work, which is highly relevant to City Council. So I'm eager to apply this uh, experience and skill to uh, City Council here in Morgantown. Personally, I'm uh, the very fortunate husband of a wonderful woman. We've been married for 12 years. Um, her name's Christine. 
I'm also the proud father of two beautiful girls, Grace and Faith. Uh, we're a very active family. We love to uh, do things in the community. We're active outdoors, and that's one of the things we like about this area. We go up to Cooper's Rock, uh, the Rail Trail, White Park. We very much enjoy Morgantown as a family. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, as I said, I just wanted to get involved on City Council to, to do what I can to make this community a really great community. Thank you. Thank you. Our first question today concerns the transportation bill, also known as House Bill 4009, which was passed by the West Virginia State Legislature in March of 2016. Um, it is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County mm -hmm. through this bill. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? That's a great question. I think anytime you're talking about a potential tax increase, it's a tricky issue. I mean, we can all recognize the need for infrastructure improvement. It's pretty clear. Um, fortunately, uh, here locally, we were able to make some changes, uh, increase um, the frequency of repaving on our streets, but we have a long way to go here. And so I do support the concept of improving the infrastructure of Morgantown. Getting that into action is, is somewhat tricky though. I think one of the key things we can do is start having these, these conversations, informing people of the benefits of having a 1% sales tax to pay for better roads. It's kind of like changing the oil on your car. You, you pay a little more up front, but then in the end, that, that maintenance fee helps everything run smoothly. Um, if we can have a better infrastructure system, we'll have uh, better quality of life, less car repairs. You, you're aware of that recent study that shows how much West Virginians pay on car repair. Uh, we can all pay a little bit collectively and avoid some of those car repairs. And, uh, or we can you know, let our cars die individually and, and pay all at once. I think the smart option is to work together to improve infrastructure. That's one of my main campaign platforms, and I would support that. As far as getting um, voter uh, support for that, I think we need to have some town hall meetings, uh, perhaps get uh, some informational sessions going and really inform the voters of the benefits. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to tax people to death. So if we do implement and have this 1% sales tax, we should consider uh, reducing perhaps or, or phasing out um, some of the user fee or even some of the, uh, some of the other taxes municipally and uh, see what we can do to avoid taxing people too much. I know that's a concern as well. That's a concern for me. Thank you. The next question concerns the concept of an allowance housing the Alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, mm -hmm. the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and also the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. It's a priority for the Chamber. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? The, the easy and short answer is I agree with that and I would publicly promote and advocate for such a measure. I think there are a lot of benefits to be had by combining uh, these offices and organizations. And what I'd like to see is something of a Morgantown Civic Center, if you will, that combines all of these into, into one place, one location, for the convenience of consumers and residents and also for the cost savings and increase in efficiency that it would offer. Uh, practically speaking, I know that uh, the Mountaineer Mall off Green Bag Road is a facility that's in good condition, that's being underutilized at the moment, and still fairly central location. I, I think that we could look at, as a city, um, moving some of these offices and organizations that you've mentioned to the Mountaineer Mall and making that a civic center for Morgantown. That would be the beginning I think uh, another thing we could do to improve that is to also look at some of the other needs uh, that are in town. I know that daycare, for example, I have two daughters, I know that daycare, affordable daycare, is a challenge for many parents. And if we could open up or, or encourage someone to open up a daycare at the Civic Center, um, that would allow a lot of parents to re-enter the workforce. I'm just talking very practically here. Um, and who knows what we could do from there. But 
I would definitely support. Um, I, I would think that uh, City Hall, uh, City Council could pass an ordinance or a resolution indicating our support for such a measure. Thank you. The next question uh, concerns Metro government. Mm -hmm. What would you do, privately and publicly, if anything, to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro governmental entity? I think that the idea of combining local governments is a good one. It offers some advantages in terms of efficiency, um, simplicity, streamlining operations, and, and sharing costs. You know, you can reduce overhead. Um, there's also a built-in advantage of negotiating area-wide issues. You know, you don't have to call in different entities one at a time. So there are some definite advantages there. The, the cons, perhaps, are ensuring that there's an equitable distribution of representation. Anytime you do consolidation, you're going to have some who stay and some who go. And frankly, we need to make sure that all the parties, all the constituents, are fairly represented. Nobody takes more than their fair share. And uh, in order to achieve that, we're going to have to have a lot of buy-in and involvement from all the communities. So I would propose uh, a lot of information sharing. I, again, town hall meetings, uh, public comment hearings. Let's make sure that we bring in as many parties as possible. Uh, we need to work together. I know that a lot of growing metropolitan areas have adopted uh, a form of metro government, if you will. And uh, I think it's a good way to go. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. There are some good models that we can emulate and apply here locally. So I would advocate for that, uh, provided that we have equitable representation of all the parties involved. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that run through the city? That's a tricky question, and uh, I think that perhaps the bigger question behind that is the ownership and control and maintenance of such roads in general. I know that the city and the Department of Highways in the state have uh, divvied up some of the roads, and it's often not logically clear as, as to which road is which. And so I'd like to look at the usage of each road, the maintenance of each road, and if in fact uh, the user fee is needed to maintain Department of Highway or, or State Roads, we should talk to them about perhaps assuming control or, or ownership, if you will, of those roads. Practically speaking, um, if a road needs to be fixed and no one else can do it, I would support using some of the user fee for that. But I don't want to have the whole um, situation of taxation without representation, if you will, where we would be paying for something but not, not having a voice in, in how it is controlled. So I think that's a difficult conversation, but one we need to have and one we could definitely uh, address. We have a new city council coming up this April 25, and I'd like to work with uh, the new city council members to, to pursue this. Um, bottom line, let's make sure it's fair. Let's, let's not pay for more than we should. Our final question today is, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create activity centers, economic activity centers, within the city of Morgantown? Since most of the economic development in the last 10 years has occurred outside of Morgantown city limits. Morgantown is a great location. Um, particularly, I'm thinking of High Street, if you're talking about businesses. It's, it's a gem of a, of a main street. For, for this type of a town. And I'd like to look at ways that we could revitalize High Street. Uh, we need to make that both a user-friendly and a business-friendly environment. Um, practically speaking, if we want to pull more people into High Street, we could look at opening up parking on the evenings and weekends, see what we can do there. Um, we also need to simplify and streamline the b &O tax, the business and occupancy tax, to make sure that businesses have the environment they need within city limits to operate, to function well, to function uh, competitively. In terms of a specific um, economic development initiative, I, I think we should continue to pursue what we've already started at the airport. That has potential for um, expanding the reach of Morgantown. Um, 
nationally. And uh, again, make sure that we make Morgantown a comfortable and fostering area for local business. We want to have jobs, but not just minimum wage jobs. We want to attract uh, living wage and, and higher wage jobs as well. So, yes. Thank you. We've come to the time now where we are allotting ten or two minutes to each candidate to give their closing arguments, so to speak, to the public to tell them anything else they believe um, is important about their particular candidacy, any other new ideas or thoughts they have about how we can improve the quality of life here in Morgantown. Thank you. Um, I want to make Morgantown a great city. It is a great city in many ways already, but I recognize that we have some challenges. We have a unique um, group of, of entities here. We have industry, we have commerce, we have education, and we have residents. And those, the interests of those groups are sometimes competing. So what I'd like to focus on on City Council is a collaborative approach to any issue that comes up. Quite frankly, uh, if we're going to function as a mature city, uh, we shouldn't have city council members suing other city council members. I'd, I'd like us all to get along. Any time that we're fighting on city council, we're not getting the work done. And the people who suffer are the residents of Morgantown. So my pledge is to bring a collaborative and goal-oriented attitude to the city council, uh, to Ward 3 in particular. Working together, having the difficult conversations, making sure that we're we're making progress. Uh, as I said, Morgantown is fantastic. Uh, we need to make it even better. I've got the energy and the ideas and the drive to make sure that that happens. And I'm asking for the city of Morgantown to support me in this endeavor. So April 25, please, come and vote. Make your voice heard. Ryan Wallace for Ward 3. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Posidus. My name is Steve LeCagnon, and I am the President and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are providing to each of the candidates for this City Council election an oppor opportunity to provide a two-minute opening statement to the public to describe yourself a little bit and your candidacy, and uh, now is your time to do that, sir. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to talk about my candidacy to people out there, so thank you. My name is Mark Brazitis. I'm an English professor at WVU and I have been for 17 years. I'm proud of the work I've done, the 2,000 plus students I've taught. I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer and technical trainer here in Morgantown. I also coach four girls basketball teams at North Elementary School. I co-direct a Learn to Skate program at our ice arena. I'm a founding member of the Appalachian Prison Book Project, which thus far has sent 17,000 books to imprisoned men and women in Appalachian State, six of them. And I also co-lead a book club and writing workshop in the Hazleton Prison Women's Facility. So I'm deeply involved in the community and I'm proud of the work that I and other volunteers around town have done. I'm married, my wife Julie and I have two daughters, Annabelle and Rebecca who are students at Morgantown High School. And I'm running for city council because, A, I love Morgantown, and of course we do. And I want us to remain a livable place. I want us to be a more accountable and civil place. And I want to think about, us to think about, and I have plans for long-term sustainability of our wonderful city. Thank you. I. Uh... We'll now go to the first question, which concerns the transportation bill, uh, also known as House Bill 4009, which was passed by the West Virginia Legislature in March of 2016. Um, this transportation bill and the voters' approval of it here locally is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. What we want is for the voters to approve a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. What, if anything, would you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Sure, absolutely. First, let me say I am a fervent supporter of small and medium-sized businesses in our community. I grew up literally in a small business. My mother had a small business in her basement. 
she was a magazine publisher. I'm an English professor. You think, oh, she must have published a literary journal. In fact, it was for the collision repair industry. The magazine was called Hammer and Dolly. I love uh, talking about uh, those issues with the men and women in that field. We have great small businesses and medium-sized businesses around town that we need to support. And one of the ways we can do that is to literally walk in their doors and make relationships with them. Oftentimes we're on a computers ordering things. Well, guess what? You can go to Pinocchio's Books and Toys and order books that way, and they will get it, those books to you the next day in most cases. So we have fabulous and unheralded businesses in our town. I'm not a big fan of taxes. I'm not a big fan. I think there may be, and I'm open to conversation about any kind of plan that helps us, particularly our roads. I have a plan that would look at another way of raising revenue, which is to think about expanding our borders. Right now we're much too geographically small for the true size of our city. So let's talk about expanding our borders and bringing those businesses and people at our edges into our community to increase our revenue flow that way. That's one idea to increase and handle that road issue, more revenue, better roads. We could look at hiring a city advocate to make it happen, uh, to argue our case in Charleston. We need to have a better relationship down there. We could look at things such as grants that we would be available to pursue with a larger size town with expansion of our borders. And I'm a grant writer. I've written thousands of dollars of successful grants. So there is a different way, a broader way, a better way, I think, than strictly promoting a, a regressive tax on that issue. Thank you. The next question concerns the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. It is a priority of the Chamber. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality, if anything? I think I'm not entirely sure that's one of the missions of the City Council, but let me say that I'm interested, I'm a unifier, I like to get people together who have big plans and want to do big things together that are worthwhile for the community. As a Peace Corps volunteer, I got a bunch of different people together at, in my job at WVU running various programs. I've gotten a variety of people together to, to look at the bigger vision. So I'm happy to step in where it makes sense to step in and be that unifier, be that independent person. And I'm definitely running an independent campaign. Be that independent person who can be a unifier for good ideas that are presented to, to me. We need to have uh, civility as part of that. We need to be open to those ideas and engage those ideas in a creative way, in a respectful way. And I'm all about big ideas. The secret of being a professor is you don't only teach, but you learn. So good ideas coming my way from any quarter, I'm willing to listen to, debate, look at, research, and move forward if I think those are good ideas. So count me as a unifier. Count me as somebody who wants to get groups together and move forward together. Thank you. Our next question um, concerns Metro government. What will you do to privately and publicly promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments in Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single Metro governmental entity? Great. I think there is much to gain from economies of scale. I'm definitely interested in looking at what we can do together to make things less expensive for us, to combine when that makes sense. And I think I already have a plan in place that pushes toward that goal of, of being a larger community, that is to extend Morgantown's borders, to bring in those people at, on our borders, businesses on our borders, to be part of our community, to contribute to our revenue stream. So I'm already engaged in that activity with my, with my plan. I think that's what we need to do is to think about that plan because we also, and, and not that I'm uh, not interested in that idea, I'm very much interested in talking about that and researching it, we also should be concerned with the great people we employ in Morgantown, the, the police and the people who help run our government, our, um, our, our city workers, and we wouldn't want to leave them behind in any kind of grand scheme. But where economies of scale make sense, absolutely. 
But in terms of my, my idea of bringing more people in, that also gives people representation who aren't represented by city government when they really should be. They have the county commission out there, but they need a representative like me or someone on council to represent their true interests. So that makes it a more democratic idea. That's what I'm promoting. Thank you. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to, to improve state-owned roadways that happen to run through the city of Morgantown? I think if the state is willing to give us those roads, and I believe in the power of local government, and I believe we know what's best for our community and our city, I think a negotiation could take place in which the state says it's, it's yours, those roads are yours. I'd say, okay, if they're ours, then we can look at taking care of them. I think that's a negotiation we can have. That would be wonderful. Then we could look at how can we revitalize our downtown. Can we talk finally about maybe moving the trucks out in a win-win situation, maybe getting some pedestrian space back there in downtown. I've been hearing a lot from families who want downtown to be more family friendly. If we had control over that road downtown, we could fix it. We could fix all our roads. And we could make it more friendly, we could make it more dynamic for our great businesses downtown. So we need to negotiate that. We shouldn't just surrender to Charleston. They all already think we have a lot here. Well, we don't. We have the worst roads in the state, for example. And we don't need the worst roads in the state. We need to figure that out, and Charleston isn't helping us. We could help ourselves by having an advocate down in Charleston. We could help ourselves by having more control over our destiny here. Thank you. Our final question. What ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city of Morgantown since most of the economic development has occurred outside Morgantown city limits in the last 10 years? Sure. I have big ideas and positive ideas and inclusive ideas that will move us all forward and I'm hoping I can enact those ideas or help bring those ideas or bring them to the table so we can discuss them. Let's expand our boundaries to get the revenue we need. Let's think about the city advocate. Let's get someone to advocate our case in Charleston. Let's look at grants we can go after. I'm a grant writer. I'd like to go after every single grant we're eligible for. Why not? We're paying some of that in federal taxes. There's no reason that money shouldn't be coming back to our community. Let's go and grab them. Let's talk about a green belt around our community. If we purchase the haymaker for us in negotiations with the landowners, we could have a literal green belt, what the city of Cleveland calls the emerald necklace. And what a great way of promoting our community or having in our community this incredible belt that would draw businesses, keep people here, keep families healthy economically, spiritually, and also keep our young people interested in staying here. We need to encourage people to stay and help grow our economy and help contribute to our community, so a green belt. Another issue is our ice rink. I'm deeply involved in that, and it's a charming facility. We need a state-of-the-art facility. And a state-of-the-art facility with two sheets of ice, already the, our ice rink is the only revenue generator from Bow Park. But if we had a state-of-the-art facility, we could double, triple, quadruple that revenue, fund all our Bow Park programs, bring in minor league games from the Penguins, have hockey exhibitions and leagues that come in, contribute to our economy, maybe set up local businesses within the ice rink. These are, these are ideas we can definitely enact, and we need to think boldly and broadly in, in a visionary fashion, and that's what I want to do. But you need a unifier, you need civility, you need someone with an independent voice and independent ideas, and that's me, Mark Prezaitis, and thank you all for being here and listening to what I have to say today. I appreciate your questions. Thank you. We have one last opportunity for you to take two minutes uh, to address the citizens of Morgantown uh, concerning your candidacy or any other thoughts or ideas you may have that you think are relevant to, uh, to being a city council member. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm Mark Prezaitis again, and I'm running for city council. And 
I'm a basketball coach, and I want Morgantown to play offense. I want us to think about the long term. I don't want us to be constantly running backwards and playing defense. So we need some big ideas for our community and our city. Ideas that pull us all forward together. These are ideas we talk about as a community. We decide they're good or they're great. We move on with them, and we all are together in our progress forward. So I'm all about playing offense, big ideas, moving us forward as a community. And I've already articulated some of those ideas. A green belt, improve our ice rink, let's go after grants, let's expand our borders, let's be civil, let's talk about the greater good, which is our community. I don't care about personalities, I care about the greater good for our community. And I want to work together with anyone who has an idea, to make that happen. So that's why, in part, that I'm running and I'm happy to be doing it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Bain. My name is Steve LeCagg and I'm the new president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And we're here today uh, interviewing candidates for city council. Um, at this point, we offer to each candidate two minutes in which to describe themselves, uh, identify the, who they are, what they're running for, what mm -hmm. ward they're in, and uh, anything else that comes to their mind that they think is relevant to their candidacy. Okay, great. I've uh, been on council for 16 years. Um, that'll be eight terms. I'm going for my ninth. Um, my whole thing on this, I, I'm from Morgantown. I'm born here, raised here. Um, I enjoy helping people. Um, and I, you know, I do take issue to, it is my hometown. I want to make sure it's right for everybody. Uh, I am a representative from First Ward, but I represent all seven wards. Uh, I get calls frequently from other people from other sections of the town. And uh, my whole thing on this, it's very simple. If you call me, that's my cell phone number that's on the, on the website. So that's all. I carry this thing with me. And uh, if I can't answer it, I'll get back to you. And that's what a council member should do. should talk to them and pass on the information to the appropriate persons that can help them in the city. You know, and my whole thing is we need to be a policy board more than anything else. We've got to concentrate on things that are fire, police, garbage, and other services, street department, those things, to make living here as best we can make it. So that's pretty much it. That's all I've got. Thank you. We'll start with the first question then. That question is the transportation bill. Um, as you know, it was passed by the West Virginia State Legislature in March of 2016, and it has become a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, what we are seeking to do is to eventually obtain voter approval under the transportation bill for a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County. Um, what will you do to publicly promote and advocate, if anything, for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Uh, I want to say that I want to look at this very closely because we've added a lot of tax in Morgantown lately. And adding a 1% tax, it's got to be across the whole county then to make it fair for all businesses so that they have the same slate of everybody else. Because if we would do it only in pockets, for instance, if, if the city of Morgantown had done that, that kind of puts a disadvantage to those businesses in the city. Um, if this has merit that's going to make the roads better and we're going to be able to convince the public and also with policy that it would go to roads specifically in Mon County, I think you would have people that would probably really enjoy uh, supporting that because it would make things better here. Thank you. Our next question concerns the concept of an alliance housing the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, Montague, the Montague County Development Authority, and the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, as well as the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. That is a priority for the Chamber. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality, if anything? Well, I think this is a great concept because it's finally putting all the people saying the same thing and getting the choir members in the same pew. Um, it's time that we put that, and if we put that force together and, and get people to understand how much power is behind that and how much uh, we can get and 
synergize that movement into one location and get those ideas together, get those relationships together, get those connections together. It just makes it so much better and it gives us that, finally, it gives us that um, voice in Charleston that we've always wanted. Because one of the problems that Charleston's always told us is, you're sending us different voices, different ideas. But if we can go down there with three concepts and say, these are the top three things from all these people, then maybe we can get our legislature to actually say, okay, you finally got it on a rail and we're going the same direction. Thank you. Um, the next question has to do with Metro government. What will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments such as Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single Metro governmental entity, if anything? I think this is one of those ones that's hard. It's one of the hardest things you could ever do because it's like taking a you know, when I was a kid, schools always gave uh, an identity to an area of Morgantown. First Ward was what's named First Ward because it was First Ward School. Um, you know, and Second Ward has split off from that because they had Second Ward School, but now you've got Greenmont and, and, and uh, other names over there. So the thing is, you it's hard to do that, and it would be something that we would have to work with the legislature to say what incentives would a Granville, a Westover, and Star City to join together with a Morgantown and what do they get out of it because those citizens have a vested interest in their community. You know, people are proud to say they're from Star City, they're proud to say they're from Westover. So it's hard to take that. I'm say I'm proud to be from Morgantown. So it's one of those things that we have to really look at and look at what other places have done that have put together metro governments and how what strategies have they used. And that would be a first step. I, you know, it's always hard to think of that because I don't know if it would happen in my lifetime or even my kid's lifetime. But it's not a bad thing to at least look at the concepts and see what strategies we could have for the future. Thank you. Um, our next question concerns the user fee, the city's user fee. Um, and the question is, will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that happen to run through the city of Morgantown? If, if, the, if the state road would allow us to do some improvements, I would be all for it. One of the problems we've had, I'll give you a perfect example, even in the winter to clean off High Street Bridge, they give us a hard time, but that's a state-owned bridge. But we still run our, our uh, brush hogs that are go on to the sidewalks to clean them up because State Road normally doesn't do that. But we've, it gets down to that kind of thing. If they're willing to work with us, I think the, the presence of a change in council right now, a change that is one that's going to be more cooperative to outside entities, I think we can make some headway with that. And if we can help them in some way, if they're willing to give some money, we're willing to give some money, maybe we can get some of these roads that they're not touching and get them done. All right. Our last question concerns your ideas, um, and, and the question goes like this. What ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city, since most of the economic development has occurred outside of the Morgantown city limits in the last 10 years in Montgomery mm -hmm. County? Yeah. I, I've, I've spoken to this at council. We're kind of the donut hole. You know, people love to use the, I'm in the greater Morgantown area but you're not in Morgantown, and we're not getting the B&O tax, and there's other people that are prospering big time from a B, having our name. Um, what I'd love to see happen is some incubators inside the city, get some minds together that if we can work with, again, the state, county, every mind that we can get together to say what kind of things outside the box that we've not done before, what can we do? You know, what things are still available. I, you know, we're kind of in a, you know, we're kind of in a box now because we've kind of built out as much as we can. Now we need to build in. And that's the most difficult one because you have to take old structures down. You have to look at zoning. You have to look at how we can do some variances to make sense for the future and how we can change what dynamics we have downtown. And also, 
in those areas that aren't developed yet that we can maybe do things on the outskirts of town. And also, if we do a good job, maybe we can get some of those developers that are right on the edge of town to finally understand that, hey, this makes sense to be a part of Morgantown. Thank you. We've now come to the point in our questions where you have an opportunity to sort of freewheel it for two minutes, tell the <laughs> voters exactly uh, what your candidacy is about or any thoughts or ideas you have that you want to convey to them. Okay. The biggest thing over this time is I'd love to see more people come out and vote. We, we, you know, we've had about a 9% vote count for a long time. Um, you know, we need you involved. There's a lot of neighborhood associations now that have stepped up and done a lot of different things. But I would really like to see a more involved community come out and tell us how you feel about things. Um, and it's not a bad thing to uh, say something that maybe, you know, I may not like. It's okay. Well, it's okay to disagree. You know, one of the things that's been out there is like, we've had this 4-3 division in council. Well, the problem is, is that people don't understand how council works. Almost 90% of our votes are 7-0. And then... When you go up to 6-1, it goes up to like 93%. And above that, then that's where the 4-3 comes in. But those are issues that it's okay to disagree, but have a discussion that makes sense. You know, we, we have people that continue to bring up stuff that is irrelevant to the whole thing of what we're doing and trying to govern Morgantown. Yeah, there was a lawsuit and all that business, and I don't want to talk about that. We, the judges have discussed it. It's done. Let's move forward. And if we continue to keep ourselves digging that hole and going backwards, it doesn't help us. You know, one of the things that I pushed council this last time was I wasn't going to leave that, that room until we were 7-0 on a new city manager. Because we, I wanted to make sure that the new, count, new city manager had the best chance to succeed. And the only way he can succeed is to have a 7-0 vote. And that's where we start. And no matter who I have to work with in the next next. If I get elected, I would love to, and whoever I work with, I'm going to try to make it the best I possibly can, but try to work with more of the outside entities, the state and the county, and you all too. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Wendell. My Thank name you. is Steve LeCagnon, and I am the new president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, we are here today for the purpose of each candidate for city council having some time to talk to the citizens of Morgantown concerning their candidacy. So if you would please introduce yourself and tell the citizens a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Barry Lee Wendell. I use the Lee because uh, if you there's other people named Barry Wendell and if you Google me I want to make sure you find me. Um, so um, I ran last year for state delegate and um, I didn't win and but I made a lot of friends and people asked me about running for city council this year, and I said, well, Nancy Gensler's down the street from me, and she's a friend, so I don't want to run against her, but um, then I found out that she wasn't planning to run, so uh, I jumped in. My friends for the, uh, that who asked me were mostly people from the Bernie Sanders campaign last year. That was the people I connected with, uh, a lot of young people, but I also noticed when they started talking about uh, elderly homeowners in Suncrest in a negative way, I'm an elderly homeowner in Suncrest. So then I realized I have different constituencies that I have to deal with and that I am a part of. So um, that's kind of where that's from. Uh, I moved here five years ago. Um, my husband is the rabbi at Tree of Life Congregation, Rabbi Joe Hample, and he was hired for a job here, which was uh, took a while for him to get a job, and um, we're very happy that he was offered this position. and. Um, that's worked out well for him, and that's why we've decided this is home. We, we live here now, and this is where we plan to stay. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, make the city greener, more inclusive, um, more of a, a destination for tourists and for entrepreneurs to start businesses. Thank you. Our first question deals with the transportation bill. Uh, which was passed by the West Virginia Legislature about a year ago. And it is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Chamber would like to obtain voter approval pursuant to the transportation bill of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montegay County. What 
will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose, if anything? Thank you. Um, of course, I'm all for building roads and infrastructure, and I think that's a very important priority in the county as well as the city. Um, the city's got it has started to cover it a little more with the repaving that's being done by the user fee. Um, I'm not in favor of increasing the sales tax. I find that it's um, it hurts poor people more than wealthy people, and I would be against that. Also, the state legislature has proposed increasing the sales tax. Uh, and I would worry about people who live in border areas saying, well, the sales tax in other states that are nearby is less than the sales tax in West Virginia. Uh, the proposal is to make it 8%, and I suppose the Chamber's proposal would make it 9%. Um, that would be very high. That's comparable to California, where we used to live. Um, and I think that would be too high. So I would say my suggestion would be to increase the gasoline tax per gallon gasoline tax and have the people who use the roads pay for it. Thank you. The second question uh, deals with the concept of an alliance, an alliance which would house the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. That is likewise a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality, if anything? I do think all those groups should be together. That would be a great thing for, um, for planning and purposes in Morgantown. I would wonder who is going to pay for it. Um, is there a building available? I might look for a building available and hope that those organizations can contribute to paying the rent for it or to buy the building. Um, I don't think the city should be, uh, the city taxpayers should be responsible for that. I think it could come out of the chamber or out of TIF money uh, or the money that goes to Main Street Morgantown. Um, that would be my, my only concern about it would be how that's going to be paid for. But otherwise, I think it's a great idea to have those people together. Thank you. Our next question deals with Metro government. What will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments, specifically Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City, into a single Metro governmental entity? I think each of these cities has their own identity. and. Um, I've lived in places where there were several small towns that didn't want to merge, although it might have been good for them to do that. Uh, I think we, what we would need to do here is to start with um, working together on certain projects, perhaps getting a paving contractor together as a group to pave the streets or um, people to clear the snow, things like that, or maybe making contracts with a cable company. Um, then we could talk about, see how, how the things fit together. Because I see us in Morgantown as a university town. At Star City is a little different. Granville is sort of a coal mining town and um, Westover has, has its own sort of identity. What I'd rather see in terms of increasing the size of the city, uh, let's say Westover has Morgantown Mall, Granville has University Town Center. I think that Morgantown should have, um, Suncrest Town Center should be in Morgantown and we should expand out in the direction of the unincorporated parts of the county before we look at the other cities. But I still think we need to have cooperation and money saving projects with these other cities. Now we're going to take you in a little bit of a different direction and ask you, will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state owned roadways that run through the city of Morgantown? Um, I had asked somebody about that question because I'm not sure that they don't already do that. Um, I'm not sure how that works now. I'd have to do more research on it. Um, I suppose it would be okay. I mean, the problem is that the state is not going to do anything for Morgantown at this point, uh, nor is the federal government, so we're, I feel like we're really on our own. So as long as those streets are in the city, then I would think that we would do that. 
Um, of course, what I'd ultimately like to see is that we reroute, reroute US 19. So if you're coming north, it becomes Green Bag Road is marked US 119 till it hits the mile ground or apartment run to the mile ground. And then the streets in the downtown are no longer uh, federal roads and state roads. Uh, same with 19, if we could run it up across the river um, through Granville and Westover to, and hook up to 19 north of the city, then we could make those streets not the, not the federal and state routes and uh, perhaps help to get the trucks off the streets. Thank you. Our final question deals with your ideas. Specifically, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city of Morgantown? Since most of the economic development has occurred outside the Morgantown city limits, specifically in Montegay County, in the last 10 years. Okay. Um, I think we have to do this differently. For instance, um, I don't think we need to have a Target and a Walmart downtown. We have a lot of good businesses downtown, but they're small scale. Um, I'm thinking one, two, three, Pleasant and Black Bear Burritos and uh, Phoenix Bakery, uh, places like that, and some of the Middle Eastern restaurants in town and the Indian restaurants. Um, so we need to do that. There is space downtown to build more things. Um, there are empty lots on University Avenue. There's the area that was going to be the new student housing on, on the university. That's Apparently they've dropped out, but there's a garage there that could be repurposed as um, some sort of uh, retail facility. I think we should have perhaps a, a West Virginia tourism place or a place that's for tourists and locals that shows uh, crafts in West Virginia and restaurants from West Virginia. Um, I think that would like something like Tamarack in the south part of the state. We could build that along the waterfront somewhere. Uh, and we should be a destination. I mean, when your friends come from out of town, they don't say, you know, I've heard all about University Town Center. I want to go there. They don't because they have that in their towns. Everyone has that. They want to see High Street and Pleasant Street. And I think that that's where we should, um, we, there's certainly more we could do downtown. Uh, maybe if we could have validated parking or free parking at certain times of the day, I think that would be um, very useful also. Uh, but I think we need smaller businesses and new businesses to come into downtown. Thank you so much. We're now at the portion of our interview where you have two minutes to talk to the citizens of Morgantown about yourself, about your candidacy, or anything else you think they should know about you. Okay. Um, well, what they should know about me, I think I've already said what, how I, where I stand on the issues that are important to you. Um, I've lived in a lot of different places. I was born in Baltimore, um, and um, I last lived. I lived in Los Angeles for 25 years, so I bring a little bit of that to here. But uh, I'm firmly here now. Uh, I don't see ever going back there. Um, I like Morgantown because it's smaller. It's a lot less pretentious. Um, in LA, if you're not rich by the time you're 30, you don't really belong there anymore. So we were well past our expiration date in that town. Um, and I feel much more comfortable here now than I would there now. Um, I did love being there when I was younger. Um, so I see in the city, there's two ways you can go. You can look at the past and say, why aren't things like they were in 1955? Or you can look at the future and say, and embrace that and say, yes, we are going to have a large number of Muslims here. We are going to have a university with an LGBT center in it. We are going to have, things are going to be different and we have to deal with that. Um, that the internet takes a, is a huge part of that and startup businesses and tech businesses, people have to feel welcome here coming from somewhere else. And I don't think that's true in a lot of West Virginia. But I do think it's true here that people do feel welcome coming here. But we have to emphasize that and point that out. And, um, and we also need to have a greener city, more sidewalks and bike paths and trees. I think we can do that. There was already some work on that. There's a sidewalk and a bike path being built on the 705. So that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, Mr. Catlin, my name is Steve Lacagnon. I'm the new president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, and uh, we appreciate you coming in to respond to the questions that the Chamber has for each of the candidates running for City Council. Um, for the next two minutes, you will be provided an opportunity to tell the citizens of Montague County who you are and what ward you're running in and what your thoughts and ideas may be concerning your candidacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm Eldon Callan. I'm a native of uh, Montague County. I was uh, born here in uh, Morgantown. Uh, grew up till I was 11 years old on what they now call Owl Creek. It was, uh, when I was growing up, it was called the uh, Wirt Mine Road. Uh, but Wirt Mine has been gone for at least 25 years or more. 30 years, I think. But, uh, I, I'm, uh, my father was a coal miner and an auctioneer and a farmer and owned apartments and did a little bit of everything. My mother was a homemaker and she was involved in uh, democratic politics. Uh, she was one of the founders of Clinton Women's uh, Democratic Club. and uh, So I've, I've been around, around uh, politics in one fashion most of my life. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be in one of eight children. Uh, the, my father was determined to get all of us uh, through college, and all eight of us did graduate from WVU, so WVU is a real asset uh, for our community, but particularly to our family. Uh, I am uh, uh, graduated in journalism, but all three of us went to school on an Army scholarship. and. Uh, I graduated and spent five and a half years in the military during the Vietnam era, and then uh, I went to work for the United Mine Workers, and since then I've been in private business. I've been an attorney. I've been in, uh, uh, I went to, got my master's in public administration, and then I was uh, convinced to run for county commissioner. I spent uh, six years as county commissioner, in which I really focused on my primary goal is to take care of the people and make sure the county's a better place for my grandchildren. Thank you. Well, we're going to focus first off on the transportation bill, uh, which was passed by the West Virginia legislature just a little over a year ago. That bill is a priority, priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce because it allows us to put a referendum before the voters to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase to improve roads and related infrastructure here in Montague County. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax increase for this purpose? Uh, I may have an uh, a, uh, advantage in a couple ways on this bill. One, I served on the Transportation Committee as uh, I was asked to uh, serve on that. It's uh, by uh, Billy Atkins in the chamber at the time. Uh, I was instrumental in not only lobbying for it, but helped. Uh, write it and include different uh, issues in there. Also, my position with the Chamber of Commerce, it's the number one priority. And uh, so, from the local, let our counties act locally, act, what we have is an opportunity to take local funds to make up for lack of state funds and leverage that money for additional funds from federal or, or other uh, funding sources to to solve our infrastructure problems. The reality is the state does not have the money to do that, so we got to step forward and do that. Uh, uh, I, as I'm going to separate my position as a chamber, in which I'm intimately involved in that, from a, a council person. They, as a uh, city council, one with uh, Morgantown, uh, I, ha I would have an obligation to try to sh associate that bill to the overall infrastructure needs of the city, how we connect that with the other towns. Roads do not go from to the edge of the city line, nor do they go to the edge of the county line. They go, they go uh, from one activity center to another. We need to focus on that. We need to work with Star City, with Westover, with the other parts of the county, with the other counties. And as a councilman, I would advocate that we get on board both on the road construction plan, the financing efforts, and, uh, and the fund fundraising and campaign efforts to pass this, uh, to pass this bill for projects that will be paid for and then end uh, when the projects are paid off. Thank you. 
the next question we have concerns the concept of an alliance, which would house the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street, Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Monagania County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Econ Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in Morgantown. That is a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce. What will you do to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality, if anything? I've had a, a great opportunity uh, uh, to serve on that uh, market strategy Judy's committee from the beginning, I was like the second person they interviewed on, on the idea. I have, uh, whether I was working at the federal level with the International Union and I mine those workers or the various state levels throughout the United States and Canada, uh, I've always advocated more efficiency. Uh, you've got to, government uh, in groups such, uh, such as the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce, the, the, the Main Street Morgantown. There's some basic needs, no matter what you do administratively, that can be shared. And that money that, that's taken out of that, uh, that c comes out of the actual mission uh, when you add those administrative costs. So that's the, the one plus. The other plus is just the whole idea of economic and community development. When you have when you have people coming into this area, and I just came from the Morgantown Area Partnership meeting, and we were talking about this very thing, into an area, and they're not sure where to go, or they're looking for this uh, particular size building, but uh, the chamber doesn't know about it or the development authority doesn't know about it or Main Street doesn't know about it, then they get frustrated by having to go all these different places. The idea of coming together on these common missions there is just logical. Uh, not only do you save money, but it saves, it saves the investors. It makes us more professional out to the community. We look like we know what we're doing to that investor, whether that investor is coming from New York, from Illinois, Iowa, or coming from uh, Japan or Germany. Uh, that gives us that kind of reputation that, that we want to spread throughout the world. Thank you, sir. The next question I have for you is concerning Metro government. What will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single Metro governmental entity? This is something that I've been, uh, oh, again, it sort of relates back to what I was just talking about, the alliance or partnership concept. Uh, the, the, the duplication, the, the uh, inconsistencies of going across this side of the street to that side of the street. If, I, if I'm trying to start a business or even trying to build a house, I got to do it differently on that side of the street than I got to do on this side of the street. It's, it's, it's a waste of effort. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. And I, I'm a big one. Uh, as a commissioner, I, I promoted the whole idea that we got to work together. And one of the things I did in the uh, first uh, time I was president of the commission was to start a local uh, local leadership committee is what I call it and where we brought the school board all the municipalities WVU the Chamber of Commerce the County Commission and any other entities that we could bring in to focus on let's find com commonality let's find ways that we can work together let's save uh, save a lot of taxpayers' money and focus it more on creating a more livable community, a more promising community. Also, it provides the opportunity for business, uh, business consistency. Why, why should a, a, a building be built on this side of the river differently than it is on the other side of the river? They all should be consistent. The investor should be able to know how that is. I think the most important part uh, as a council person, again outside of my role as uh, the chamber, is that I, I need to look for those commonalities, find those things we can work for, and advocate it to our citizens because it's ultimately going to be up to the citizens. The incentives from the state to 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 uh, join together are necessary, but it's ultimately going to be the citizens say, you know, this is a better idea than being splintered like we are now. 
Thank you. Our next question concerns Morgantown's user fee. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that happen to run through the city of Morgantown? Very much so. I've, uh, I've looked, tried to work with, with different people in the city in the past, and the thing I've always emphasized is that we're all in this together. The Department of Highways is, is key to providing not only the, the main transportation service, but, that, but it's all got to be meld together to make, to, to make a, a uh, roadway access, to improve it within the city, between the cities, into the county, between the counties, and between the states. Those got to be connected. Now, currently, uh, and over the last four years, we've really had a breakdown in relationships with the state agencies, and the DOH is a primary one. Uh, you know, I stepped forward as a county commissioner and tried to convince the, the majority of the council to uh, let me work out uh, an agreement to remove trucks from downtown over a four or five year plan. And Paul Maddox was very interested in doing that. And I was rejected. I was told to, to go away. They had the majority. In the... That has created very much animosities. I can break that down because I get rid of that animosity because I have a very good working relationship with the Department of Highways. And as a council person, that's the first thing I want to do is bring the Department of Highways in here to the city of Morgantown, see that we're focused on, on uh, helping the, 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 pro the process and the projects and not uh, pulling away from them or wasting their time and wasting their money, which that whole truck ban that was, it was just a total waste of money and it's created animosities that they, they told me that they really don't want to talk to the city of Morgantown. Well, I'm convinced that if I'm elected that I, they will talk. I know they will talk. They've already said so. Uh, I, can, I can bring that kind of uh, focus that we'll still get our state money but we, we can utilize money to, to upgrade uh, areas that we really need to connect that user fee money and, uh, to, to the rest of the city and the rest of the county. Our last question deals with your ideas uh, to create economic development um, or improve it. What ideas specifically do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city of Morgantown itself, since most of the economic development in the last 10 years has occurred outside Morgantown's city limits. That, that's, that's a real pet peeve with me because since basically since Dan Boroff left as city manager, our town has been going down, down, down. People, people are not coming into the town. People are leaving for a lot of reasons. And some of people, you know, I, some lawyers I know have said, well, it's because of three dollar uh, user fee. Well, that's not necessarily the case. They're not moving just because of three dollar. There, there's just this whole attitude in the city of Morgantown uh, that's been going on that we don't, you know, you're going to do it our way or get out. Well, people are getting out and they're not building. Why do we have a problem here with the Wharf District? Wharf District is not being developed properly. I have ideas as to how we could develop this Wharf District. Our riverfront is not being properly utilized. I have ideas how we can promote that. But we really do have to focus on the long-term benefits of everything we do on the council. You ban this, you ban that, you, should, you, have a reputa you have a reputation throughout the state that you're hard to work with. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. Business people talk to business people, they're going to stay away. So when they come here, they don't go to Morgantown. I want to change that whole dynamic. They look to the outside. They look, well, I'll go over to Granville, I'll go to the, the town center, I'll go to the Suncrest town center, I'll go, uh, I'll go over to, to uh, uh, to uh, uh, Star City even. Uh, it's on the same side of the river. And, and that's because it's this attitude that, that business is not important. Well, business is important, but we need to be partners with them. And, that, and that's 
really what I've always focused off through my entire career, whether it was the military or, or uh, the unions, or uh, when I worked for the unions, I was a big one, started the American Coal Foundation with four other American Electric Power and four other uh, coal groups. Because you got to cooperate and work together because that's the only way we can grow together. If you if you keep focus to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get mine and I don't care whether you get yours, then you have no business in political office. Thank you. We've now reached the point uh, where you have the opportunity to address the citizens of Morgantown uh, concerning anything, your candidacy, any additional ideas you have, any concerns you have. Um, so feel free to speak your piece. Okay, well, thank you. I very much appreciate this opportunity. Uh, there, there, there was some dynamic issues there that really need to be dealt with. And we need to recognize the shortcomings. Uh, I think a lot of times people are afraid for political reasons or just they're afraid to make people angry. They won't tell people the way it is. The reality is our town has been gone down. It's continued to go down, and it will continue to go down if we don't start and get a, a new focus, a new focus and direction uh, going forward for what's good for our grandchildren. What's our town going to look like? The, 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 the fact of the matter is, is that when you have one, one simple group stepping out and say, I'm going to do things my way, and I don't care about the negotiations, about the debate, the public debate. When they parrot one another, you automatically know that they have talked about this before. we got a shadow government here in Morgantown, and a lot of people don't have the guts to stand up and say it. I am not that type of politician. I've always spoke, and if people don't like speaking the truth, then they shouldn't vote for me. But if they want to step up and say, I want the truth and I want to know what's going on and I don't want to hear people parrot one another because they've agreed before how they're going to vote, then it defeats our whole charter. We got seven, we got seven independent council people. They're not supposed to be partisan. I don't care what you call yourself. You can call yourself whatever you want to, Morgantown this or Morgantown that or Mountaineer this or Mountaineer that. But if you're meeting outside and say, I'm going to follow this agenda and I'm not independently debating this in a public forum, then you do not belong on council. You do not belong in any political office. And that's why I'm running. I want to preserve this city and this, uh, this state and this county because we should be the bellwether for everyone else to follow. We haven't been, and that's where I want to take it. I need your vote. I need the people that think my way, that believe that they want this, this town to move forward, uh, to vote for me on April 25th. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Delaney, my name is Steve Lekeg, and I am the new president and CEO of the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, and we're here today interviewing all of the council candidates that we can, I think 12 out of the 14. Um, to give everybody an opportunity to address the citizens of Morgantown about themselves and their candidacy and to answer some specific questions that are of interest to the business community in particular and to the community at large. Um, so if you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and your candidacy, we'd appreciate that. Oh, sure. Um, my name is Ron Delaney again. I am an architect and a professor of design at West Virginia University. I live in Morgantown uh, in Woodburn with my wife and three children. My children go to Mountaineer Middle School and uh, Woodburn, excuse me, Eastwood now, Eastwood Elementary School. Um, the reason I'm running for City Council is um, I feel like Morgantown has done a lot of really great planning. We can look at the uh, Morgantown Comprehensive Plan that was completed in 2013, the MPO, um, the Crossroads Plan, as well as the Downtown um, Redevelopment Plan. And I think that there's been a great amount of foundational work done, and I think it's time to make some progress or continue our progress in working through um, working through these plans. I feel like as an architect, um, I'm particularly strong and suited to do that. Um, I, it's not unusual for me in my practice experience to get a project where you're taking input from a great many number of stakeholders, and somehow out of all of that information, even a lot of it uh, conflicting, you have to um, you have to find a vision out of that that is suitable and good for the greatest number of people. So I feel like um, my experience as an architect, and my, the abilities that I've obtained doing that, um, will bring some expertise and experience to the council that will help us move forward. 
Thank you. Our first question deals with the transportation bill, which was passed by the West Virginia legislature a little over a year ago. Um, it happens to be a priority for the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce and the business community, in particular in this uh, county. And as you know, the Chamber is seeking to obtain voter approval of a 1% sales tax increase through the transportation bill that was recently enacted to improve roads and related infrastructure in Montague County, including the city. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for voter approval of the proposed sales tax for this purpose? Well, our infrastructure has clearly not kept up with our growth. Um, the Metropolitan Planning Organization's Long Range Transportation Plan, which I strongly support, identifies a $564 million gap between the work that we need to have done by 2040 and the amount of state and nas national uh, funding that's available for those. So clearly we have to do something. Um, with the current budgetary pressures at the federal and the state levels, local governments are left to shoulder more of the cost of providing services for their citizens and other stakeholders. Um, we have to come up with some alternative methods of, uh, of funding these projects. Um, and I assume you're talking about the Letting Our Counties Act Locally, the local bill. Um, that was, uh, excuse me, that was, uh, that you guys prioritize for adoption by Monongalia County is, is one approach that I think could and should be considered. The local act gives counties the authority to levy up to a 1% sale and use tax to fund, one, improvements to existing state roads and bridges, and two, construction of new roads and bridges. Um, while the city of Morgantown has implemented the use tax, uh, to fund improvements to local roads, the state uh, division of highways, roads that run through Morgantown continue to be a point of, of contention, of conflict, of frustration for many of us. Um, adoption of the local act would give the county the authority to address these conditions um, of state roads within its boundaries, even those within its municipalities, if given the consent of those municipalities. Adoption could provide more local input and control of our state roads, and that's a good thing. Um, this type of use for local funds uh, would benefit both the city and the non-city uh, county residents alike. Um, so I think that um, I would support, as a city councilor, I would certainly support exploring um, that as one of the options that we have to, to close that funding gap. Thank you. The next question uh, we have for you concerns the concept of an alliance, an mm -hmm. alliance which would house the Morgantown Area Chamber of Commerce, Main Street in Morgantown, Sunnyside Up, the Montague County Development Authority, the Morgantown Area Economic Partnership, and the Greater Morgantown Convention and Visitors Bureau, all under one roof in a central location in downtown Morgantown. It's a priority for the Chamber. What will you do, if anything, to publicly promote and advocate for this to become a reality? Well, I think it'd be wonderful to establish even closer relationships uh, between the many entities devoted to the betterment um, and promotion of Morgantown. And you guys have provided a list of some of those, but I think that list should also include, include the city government and the county government and, and West Virginia University. Um, so I think that, um, that that's a great idea. As an architect, I believe that physical co-location of people and organizations can contribute to strengthening collaboration, collegiality, and effectiveness. Additionally, co-locating the entities listed in the question may offer additional advantages such as better coordination, um, cost savings associated with the shared use of building and resources, and one-stop service for your clientele, um, especially those that are served by two or more of these entities. So I think there are a lot of advantages. I think the key to success in any co-location is to do it in such a way that the individual identities of the co-located organizations remain recognizable and accessible for their clientele. This is possible through careful design of the physical space, and that's something that I, I have some experience with. So I would advocate for centrally locating such a shared facility in town, and that sounds like that's what you guys desire. Um, and I think it makes sense too, because the city and county um, buildings are here, as well as the university central administration. If these enti entities agree in principle to co-locate and decide to explore it downtown, I would certainly support consideration of reasonable local tax, parking, and other potential applicable incentives proposed by the city manager and his team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next uh, question deals with Metro government. Will you 
Uh, what will you do privately and publicly to promote and advocate for the consolidation of the local governments of Morgantown, Granville, Westover, and Star City into a single metro governmental entity? Well, first of all, I want to clarify that um, I think it would be inappropriate to, um, for me as a city councilor to conduct city business privately. So I'm, that's probably not what you mean, but I just want to clarify that sure. up front. Um, so a as a result, if elected, I'll approach all of my work um, as public work. I'll assume that even if it's a conversation between me and someone else, that it's, it's public and will go public. And so my obligation is always to um, work in the best interest of the greatest number of constituents. So to my knowledge, there hasn't been an organized public process for exploring the advantages and disadvantages of a consolidated metro government. Uh, advantages for other localities have been, um, is have included uh, more cost-effective and better coordinated delivery of some services, and um, while the disadvantages have sometimes included a reduction in level of services and or level of representation in government for one or the other um, consolidating entities. However, I think because of the potential benefits, it's a conversation that we ought to have, and it's something that we should explore. Um, with some shared planning and service initiatives, such as the MPO, MUB, and Bopark, already in place, we may already be realizing some of the general benefits of a metropolitan government. Are we going far enough? I think, I think we, that's something that we should, certainly should explore. Um, the advantages of a consolidated metro government are compelling, but so are the disadvantages. Other models of metropolitan government exist and should also be considered. I guess my bottom line is that if we can do things in a better way, in which the potential benefits of a change would clearly outweigh the cost, then I'm absolutely an advocate for exploring um, making a change. Um, however, again, as I understand it, that assessment hasn't been done, but I certainly would develop, uh, would support uh, developing a public process where we can, we can study that together. Our next question deals with Morgantown's user fee. Will you publicly support the idea of using some of the money generated by Morgantown's user fee to improve state-owned roadways that happen to run through the city of Morgantown? Yeah, that's a good question. So regarding um, the revenue that's generated from the user fee, um, I, I would view my responsibility as a city councilor to ensure that the money is spent effectively in a timely manner and for the purpose for which it was approved. Um, and I also think that we need to continue to monitor it and, and, and uh, assess whether it remains necessary or not. Again, we've dug ourselves into a deep infrastructure hole, and this is one way that, um, that we're trying to work to get out of it. Um, so whether we could apply those user fees to state roads or not, I think if, if we can, that's certainly something that I would consider. However, I think we have to be cautious that we don't begin to assume the responsibilities and the costs of maintenance um, from the state. Once we get into that, it may be difficult to get out of that again. What I would prefer to see is that we create a stronger advocacy in Charleston um, for our needs in terms of meeting those long-term um, long goals. However, I would be willing to consider, again, uh, so long as it was appropriate um, in the way that the user fee was approved, I would, uh, I think it'd be worth considering whether we could leverage some of those funds to help prioritize our projects in our area, but apply those funds to value-added areas of the project. So for example, when scheduled roadway maintenance is uh, coming up, do we contribute funds to help develop this roadway, these, these, these state corridors as a complete streets with bicycle and, and proper bicycle and pedestrian uh, access along those avenues? So I, I, I'm willing to consider it as long as, uh, as, long as um, that's possible and the way that the, the um, fee is applied. Um, I just think we have to be careful in the way that we do it, and we should approach it in a, in a value-added way. Thank you. Our final question concerns your ideas. Um, what ideas do you have to improve economic development and create economic activity centers within the city of Morgantown, since most of the economic development that has occurred outside out in the last 10 years has occurred outside the city of Morgantown? Right, so again, you know, as an architect, I'm a believer in plans. Um, I, think, um, I think that you know, the reason that we do plans is because they form roadmaps for our future. That said, they are general, and they don't necessarily, you know, the, the devil's in the details in terms of how we get them done. However, I think as a starting point, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of those. And the 2013 Morgantown Comprehensive Plan um, 
should, I think, again, serve as the foundation for establishing priorities in the area of economic development. They did do an economic development uh, assessment as part of that. Um, and not surprisingly, the first objective uh, was investment in infrastructure. And we talked a little bit about that um, already here. Um, I think the city has started to make progress in that area in terms of the implementation of the user fee, um, the use of the TIF districts that we have, the creation of the new Spruce Street uh, district. So that's allowing us to deal somewhat with that um, infrastructure issue. I think they've also invested heavily in the airport and the industrial park out there, which is fantastic. That gives us better connectivity beyond Morgantown and also provides some shell space for some new types of business development. Um, strong growing businesses are critical to sustaining good jobs and creating a great quality of life for our residents. Uh, I think on the policy side, again, the comprehensive plan lays out some things that we consider for, could consider, for example, providing real estate tax incentives um, associated with job creation and or exploring revisions of the B&O tax so that's more business friendly. So I think on the policy side, we could do this. I mentioned the airport as a center to answer your question more directly. I'm also especially interested in downtown and um, helping to uh, diversify the types of businesses that we have downtown. Um, I think right now we're underutilizing one of our tremendous assets, which is WBU. They've recently initiated uh, an entrepreneurship and innovation uh, program and, and they have incubators. And I think we need to brand and market ourselves as the place where when folks who start startups that come out of there, they want to stay here in Morgantown. Thank you so much. We've now come to the portion of the program where we allow each of the candidates for city council to take two minutes to express themselves and their ideas uh, about their own candidacy and any other thoughts um, that they want to express to the voters of Morgantown. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, respond to your um, questions and concerns. Um, Again, I think my strength as a city council candidate is that I would bring experience uh, as an architect. And I have experience uh, developing from plans uh, into very concrete designs and working with many, many folks, building contractors, lenders, and others to see a project um, through, through uh, see a project become realized, become a tangible thing in the world. Um, and I have designed or managed projects from ranging in cost from a couple thousand dollars to a hundred million dollars. And so I have experience with the business side of, of, of getting a project done as well, and I can appreciate that. Um, as a city council candidate, um, I certainly, I think these have been very thought-provoking questions, and I think that, um, I think that some of them uh, deal with policy that are maybe a little bit outside of my area of expertise, but I think many of them are in my area of expertise in terms of infrastructure. I think one of the most important things as a city council person is to work collaboratively, um, uh, transparently if possible, and to always, uh, always keep at heart what's in the best interest of our city as a whole. And so as a city councilor, if I'm so fortunate, uh, that will be my, my driving motto. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.